What's up, folks? It's So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. This is your pal Ryan coming at you on this beautiful, I hope it's beautiful Friday to talk about Real Housewives of Orange County. No, I'm joking. Vanderpump Rules Secrets Revealed recap. Now, we had the finale, the three-part reunion uh, last week, right? And we, I really put my whole bussy into that. Um, and I did three episodes. I did the the, the three hour and 45 minute recap. And then I did uh, the, 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 the interview with the glamor magazine author of the Ariana cover. And then I did just like bits and pieces of all the Vanderpump news stories. I am sad to inform you that today will only be two episodes. You're going to get this recap and then you're going to get our favorite guy, Josh from Backgrid TMZ, did a new interview. He was the guy that did all those inner, like the paparazzi interviews throughout Scandaball. We'd be like, okay, okay. Oh, Tom. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, is it true you cheated with Raquel? Okay, okay. And he's like, dude, hindsight 2020. So we recap that new video that just came out today. Plus, I have Kiki Monique at the Talk of Shame to tell us all about DJ James Kennedy. See you next Tuesday. Uh, from this Tuesday, the, D, the DJ J, the DJ Jax Taylor was supposed to be at, but he bailed last minute, supposedly for a family emergency. Hopefully that's okay, but that's going to be part two. We had a fabulous discussion. Fabulous dis what's wrong? We had a fabulous discussion, but we did. And we also talked about 20, like in that interview, there's like, I think 20 minutes plus, maybe 25, of just talking about Jersey and OC. So we are slowly working other Bravo shows back into the mix now that the stranglehold of Scandaball is releasing its grip. The only thing that, you know, do we want the grip released? I think we do, but let's go out with a bang. Let's let, let's do it. We've got one night. We got one moment. What's the Eminem song? Am I like one shot, one opportunity to tell the folks about secrets revealed, yo. It was kind of a mid episode. It wasn't that it was, uh, you know, but I will say scene to scene. I think we're going to have a blast. There's so many little good moments uh, overall as a show. It's not supposed to be, it's not supposed to work linear. You know, it's not, you know, as a collection of scenes, it was great. Um, there were some scenes that were really astounding. You ended up, you know, every week they find a new way to make you dislike Sandoval even more. And Raquel for that matter. I, I'm so sorry. And also, to all you Sandoval Raquel fans, hope you're doing good. You know, we'll we'll see what next season brings. Um, but uh, yeah, Let, we're gonna get into this in a second. My voice. Um, we'll we'll talk about a couple personal things first before we get in. Uh, remember, you can skip right to the recap. I usually put a timestamp where the recap starts. Um, I took. I, did, I, I didn't release an episode yesterday or the day it all blends now. Um, but uh, I got really depressed. I got really depressed and I just couldn't do it. You know, I got a lot of things going on right now. And um, if you are a listener of the Monday or Tuesday episodes, I think I brought this up is, you know, my mom is obviously dealing with what she's dealing with and it's gotten more serious as, as these things do. Um, and you know, it was really tough this weekend. I wasn't able to go to Arizona, uh, because I have, uh, my dog Brooklyn that I share with my ex and she, my dog Brooklyn is really on her last legs as, as well. Um, and, uh, so I, I couldn't bring her to Arizona. So it's been, but I can't really, anyways, I, I'm just saying that it was a really rough week. I'm going to be back in Arizona next week. And I'm very happy to be back down there, but I, I do want to say this, if you don't listen to these shows, from earlier in the week or last week, what I've been asking people to do listeners and, you know, my mom, unfortunately was admitted to the hospital. So she has not seen all of this yet. Um, she was starting to see some of them, but then unfortunately had to go to the hospital. Um, I've been asking people to send postcards because my mom got a postcard from a listener, Megan Rawlings, and she loved it. It made her really happy. And she loved seeing like, oh, it's from Seattle. Like it was very simple, but she loved it. She loved it. And she was, she actually, she never asked me things. And she goes, would, would you, would you, I said, you know, do you like that? Do you want other people to send you that? Do you want listeners to send you? And she's like, yeah. And my mom never asks for anything. So I was like, mom, I'm going to share the address. And she's like, yeah. And I asked dad's permission and mom's permission. And she said, yeah. Um, and my dad said the last couple of days when he's gone to, you know, back to check the mail, it's just been overflowing. And somebody I haven't found out yet who I'll find out all that information from my dad sent flowers. Like she just asked for a postcard, but my God, I mean, the hearts of you guys. Um, 
So I will say one last time for Becky Bailey, who, you know, you know, Becky Bailey, my mom, um, if you can send her a postcard, uh, the address is three, five, four, six East Ravenswood, R A V E N S W O O D drive Gilbert, Arizona, eight, five, two, nine, eight. Please don't, please don't make me regret that. Nobody has yet. Um, and I'm very, you know, no bombs. So good there. And, uh, I want this last part of whatever is happening right now to be, uh, you know, to, I don't know. But anyways, I was really depressed. Uh, I'll be honest about it. I try to talk about mental health in this. And I know my mental health is sometimes struggled. And I, But I do want to say we're going to have a lot of fun today. I know that's a little dark thing that I just talked about. But don't worry, because I want to assure you that being silly and stupid and talking about something I love, like Vanderpump Rules, has helped me tremendously. So I am going to put everything into this. And then you're like, dude, it's just a podcast. But for me, it's so much more than that. So you will in I, I this will be good i swear we will make sure that it's good you're a worm with a mustache did you know tom sansevo was in a jacuzzi with raquel <laughs> uh before this earlier tonight i did a um a live patreon which by the way come on over and join patreon.com forward slash so bad it's good so many cool funny people in there and even if you couldn't make the live, you can actually watch it. It will be uh, there will be a link there for you guys to watch it. It was a lot of fun. We uh, joked a lot about, about a lot of things. Um, you know, my group tends to make fun of me a lot, which I don't know how I feel about yet, but it, it was great. And uh, of course, we talked a lot about Ariana admitting to enjoying anal, which we'll talk about tonight. So also, hey, kids, if you're listening, uh, have your mom or dad explain uh, what the old Anal is. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, we got to have the conversation with the kids at some point, right? Um, thank you, guys. This whole journey of not just this podcast, which I've been doing for years, but especially Scandaval, um, I was so sad about this and still am sad. I really, like I've always said, looked up to Tom and I know... Jax Taylor made fun of me for that, as well as a lot of other people. Uh, but I really did. And that's why I kind of took this, you know, I don't know why I need to put people up on pedestals, but I somehow I do that with a lot of people. And I'm always looking for role models, even though I'm an old man. You know, like, I don't know why I'm like, what am I looking at? like at some point? I'm like, who's the role? I, regardless, I, I've learned lessons this season that I will take into further seasons of covering any show. But I truly did look into that guy and I thought, looked up to that guy and I thought what he did was just horrendous because I truly do love Ariana. And we'll see, you know, we'll see what the show and his journey entails. I don't know. It seems like he's very uh, pissy right now, which, okay. But at the end of the day, you are the architect of your future and what you do in the past actually will come back to haunt you. Even if you're, you know, in that carnal pleasure of Raquel's body, that shit, if you have not been honest with your partner of nine years, will come back to haunt you. And, you know, it will make one of the most amazing seasons of reality television known to man. So I don't want to say thank you to Tom Sandoval because I think it's horrendous, but I guess thank you, Scandival. Can we say that? Can we say thank you? Thank you. Thanks, Scandifal. Dude, on Sandoval, that's Scandifal. Get it right, dude. Um, But we've been covering this like we covered the entire season of Vanderpump Rules from day one, uh, you know, from season 10. But I covered the last two seasons as well. But I'm so proud of all of the work that not just I did, but like the team of people that I have working with me, Maritza, Sam, Maritza Lopez, who does all the amazing graphics. She does all the YouTube videos. I mean, you know, uh, so much. Uh, Sandra Fryer, who does all of the Patreon, does all the booking for guests. Um, you know, I, I, Maritza, who is always giving me all of these like fascinating things to check out. Amy Field has been helping out a lot lately with listening to podcasts and taking notes. But there, I've met so many people through through doing things like this, people that I will probably have around me for the rest of my life. And um, uh, like Ariana had texted me last week, she said, uh, oh, I thought of this, you know, it's like maybe the real Scandaball was the friends that we made along the way. And I think about that, not just with Scandaball, but this podcast in general. So many of you came to me, uh, came to listen to me or watch me on YouTube for the first time. You never heard anything about this show before. And I just want to say thank you if you stuck around. And thank you if you told your friends. This is what I've committed the rest of my life 
to doing. So I want this to continue to grow. Thank you. Stay with us. I will find new ways to be an idiot and do stupid voices and um, be completely inappropriate. And sometimes there might be a smidge of that guy has a point, but just a little bit. So if you do like it, remember to leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Thank you guys so much. If you do hear snoring, that is my dog who I've completely knocked up on medic not not knocked up i is knocked out on medication sorry um so thank you and and just i'm so proud of this show like think about it, we we did full recaps multi-houred recaps line by line and for that i want to thank juliana carosa who took all of the notes transcribed every line from each one of these episodes trust me it sucks it sucks. I still do. I did it for OC this week, which we'll talk about in a second. It sucks. So Juliana did it. it was so amazing. And, and, you know, she started putting in, she did Beverly Hills last season for me too. And she's just so good at it. So Juliana, if you're listening, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It has helped every week, but especially this week has helped because I really didn't think I was going to be up to doing this. I was really not in a great headspace that I just didn't think anything was funny. I didn't think, I didn't, and it's like, usually if I can get to the mic, I'm good. I couldn't even get to the mic. I couldn't even get, you know, just, you know, get up to walk my dog. And like, that was, so uh, thank you, Juliana, because that really does help. It's like, it gives you that script to be able to like go off and be as weird and stupid as you possibly can. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but also like we've had, Get, you know, we got to have Sheena on the, the day before this shit went down with Raquel at Watch What Happens Live. We had Katie Maloney on, finally. Uh, Terry, if you're, by the way, uh, Katie's mom, uh, who I said, Miss Maloney, she heard me say that on a podcast and she DM'd me today and she said, Ryan, we're on a first name basis. Call me Terry. Terry, if you're listening, you still owe me to come on this podcast. I know you, you still owe me, Terry. I'm calling you by your first name. Terry, you still owe me at least 15 minutes and we will make it as fun as possible. But um, I got to talk to so many great cast members and so many great um, uh, content creators. Uh, even I had my parents on to talk Vanderpump Rules. So when I look back on this season, it's not with overwhelming sadness because of what happened. It's like, holy shit, there's been so much joy. We've had so many laughs together. I mean, I, next time I see Ken, I'm going to like kiss his little little curly head, mop of hair head. And I'll be like, you crazy jacuzzi, man. You told so old in the jacuzzi. I just want to like, I have laughed so much. Are you kidding me? I mean, I can't even wear t-shirts anymore without thinking of like really hot. The Ariana kept her t-shirt on the whole time. Like everything reminds me of Vanderpump rules. So pray for me as I extricate myself from Vanderpump universe. Don't worry, we'll still do stories here and there as they come up. And I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of stories. And I have a feeling there's going to be some big announcements. And I don't know why I'm talking exactly like this. But I think there's going to be some big announcements coming up in terms of spinoffs and things like that. So uh, remember, So Bad It's Good is not just, uh, it's silly. We will bring you the, all of those uh, breaking developments as soon as they're announced. But I'm telling you, trust me, guys, some announcements are coming and remember, they start filming season 11 in like a week and a half, unless they push it back further, which would be wild. Um, how are you guys doing? Are you good? Are you with me? I, did, I, I didn't even get to ask. I always love to picture you guys, whatever you're doing, if you're in a car or at home or at church, potentially, we, we got some people in church listening. <laughs> Who knows? Some space people in space. Uh, aliens would be, a, if I got an alien to listen to me, could you imagine the alien was like, I'm a huge fan. I'm so bad. It's good. I'm just, I'm daydreaming right now, but you know, it's all about, you know, daydreaming. And by the way, we got to daydream together. So I'm daydreaming for this podcast as we continue on for more people to listen to it. I'm also daydreaming to be a bartender on Watch What Happens Live one day. I'm also daydreaming I'd love to interview Andy Cohen. I'm also daydreaming of all of these interviews and people I want to talk to from like all over in entertainment circles. So I'm asking you guys, tell me what your dreams are. Not for you. I don't care about your dreams. Get, get out of town. No, I do actually care about your dreams. But tell me what your dreams are for this show. Who do you want me to talk to? What do you want me to cover? Um, uh, I'm, I'm all ears and I know Sandra and Medica who work for, you know, like Sandra's dying to reach out to people. Um, you know, so, so 
and 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 as things progress in my life, just this is my safe spot. So I will be continuing to work, and uh, I consider this much more than just this podcast. This to me, this is some sort of weird family or some sort of weird connection that we've started. And this conversation does not end because a season of television ends. This is ongoing. You're like, dude, just shut the fuck up and just do the fucking podcast, dude. Okay, are you guys ready? Here we go. Crack my back. Oof. And you guys, I think I said this earlier. I understand. I, I understand there's creaks in my chair, and sometimes you hear weird mic noises. I have a wooden chair. It's not, Sandra didn't believe me. She thought it was a metal chair because of the creaks. It's a wood chair. It's probably going to break on my fat ass any day now. And then I'll put it in some sort of Vanderpump museum of like the chair my fat ass broke during Vanderpump Rules season 10. But uh, I, I do need to get a new chair. I just haven't had time. If, if you get any chair manufacturers are listening, please send me a chair. Um, but I, I, it's being taken care of. Oh, that's what I said. I didn't get to do an episode this week, but I was going to do one Thursday. I was going to, what is today? I was going to do one Wednesday night with OC Jersey and below deck. And I had all my notes, but my voice was for some reason so sore because uh, I had done a two hour Patreon about the Kardashian new season, which I still love to talk Kardashians. The Patreon people are like, ah, you know, they just really, but I think you got to study that family. Um, so by the time I got to do that, I just, my voice hurt and I, it was just like, I can't do it. So you might get a surprise episode this weekend involving other shows. You might, who knows crazier things that have happened. So one last time with feeling Vanderpump rules season 10 episode 19 secrets revealed. Now this is the description the cable company gives to let us know if we need to watch this or not. This is it says a deeper glimpse into the fallout of the post hashtag scandal never before seen moments from the summer shed a new light on glaring secrets that have since been revealed. Tom and Katie face the reality of their divorce while still living together. Which for me, that was the most powerful scene for me of the entire episode. They start with the Tom and Katie scene. That was the most powerful scene of all of it. And what I had always said was, for me, that was going to be the overarch, like the, the biggest story of this entire season would have been Katie and Schwartz. And I'm curious if there are other scenes regarding their relationship that were left on the cutting room floor to make way for Scandable. And it is funny, you know, when you not funny, but it's tragic when you think about how Raquel was involved, not only in, you know, Ariana and Tom, but Tom and Katie's relationship in terms of storyline. Like this girl just threw a rock and just like fucked everything in terms of, you know, just relationships. I'm not saying that Raquel was responsible for Tom and Katie at all, but I'm saying, isn't it interesting that that was one of the big, um, the big plot, the big storylines was Katie going like, don't date anybody in the friend group. And then Schwartz is like, I got a vibe, dude. We have good energy. I felt something, which Schwartz says to anybody. He literally says it to that girl on the first date that, that, that they covered on this. He's like, oh, it's good. Like, I felt something. I have just feel, I have a feeling Schwartz is one of those guys that can feel something with any girl. He's like, ah, oh, something there, dude. Um. So uh, that is, that is the, okay, wait a sec, you guys, this starts, my favorite part of Secrets Revealed was Lisa Vanderpump's um, narration of this. So they have her there in the, you know, like that pink satin, whatever the flip it is that she's always wearing. They're shooting her through like Vaseline and, you know, it's like the, it's like Kris Jenner, it's like Kris Jenner lighting where it's, you can't, uh, you, sorry, I'm. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Sorry. I have the TV going on. Sorry. I'm like, no, no, no. I turned the TV on to watch the visuals at the same time. And I realized I need two remotes to actually turn the sound down. Yeah. You just, that's uh, in the inner workings of so bad. It's good. Um, no. So Lisa's in that, you know, the pink, purple, satin, get out. Like Prince would be like, girl, yeah. Um, she's there. It's like completely lit within an inch of anybody's life. She's so lit up and they do this thing now on reality TV. I noticed this on Kardashians the other day with Kim is that 
there'll be like a makeup guy like making Lisa up and there'll be like somebody messing with Lisa's mic which by the way full tit on Lisa Lisa's like uh, I need more buttons on button I want people to see nipple please free my nipple did you know something's possible no kid, no we're talking about my nipples like I'm seeing so much skin. Like if I was an 11 year old, 12 year old boy watching Vanderpump Rules, I'd be like, who's this Lisa lady? Cause she is showing a lot of boob and I'm loving it. But they do this thing now where it's like, they're not rolling. So they're just kind of having weird banter, but trust me guys, this is all set up. They do say action, you know, like they, it's like, this isn't behind the scenes. Like they want you to believe um, so we start this and Lisa's like, welcome to Vanderpump Rules season 10 secrets revealed. And we start seeing clips from tonight's episode. Tonight we'll show you the never before seen moments this season. And we see clips, which we'll go into. And then Lisa and I talking to her goes, when we picked up the cameras, like, like this lady ever picked up a camera. I love Lisa. You know, it's like Vanderpump rules, but I love that Lisa is keeping this alive where she's like, I'm in the cutting room floor. I'm doing the editing. You know, my God, I'm putting together storylines. You know, the whole look, everything touches. Nothing goes to air without Lisa's stamp of approval. And she's like, when we picked up the cameras to try and capture this huge fallout that had happened because of Tom and Raquel's affair, there was just so much she's really going for it in these talking heads it's like it it just all wouldn't fit into one episode and lisa's like just the lies that have been told you know uh, for me though i feel like lisa in these moments she's like finding out for the first time i like we we've caught her now many times this season where she'd be like what wait raquel war Sandoval dressed up as Raquel for Halloween? What? What are you talking about? Even though that has been discussed, brought up on the show, Lisa's like, who's Raquel? What? Who's Peter? Peter from what? Well, he still works for me. My God. <laughs> so um, Lisa goes, so we had no alternative but to carry on with the story and here we are. Because at the end of the day, Lisa is a storyteller, you guys. She's like, ah, we're journalists here at Vanderpump. We need to capture the magic. This is documentary format. You know, this is the real deal. <laughs> She's like, no alternative. I couldn't in good conscience not pick back up the cameras <laughs> by the way lisa's like you know that scene with tom and ariana you know the day after when we picked back up cameras i was holding the camera it was so heavy and that's when ariana goes it's not about raquel that's why you saw the shake i, I mean i was so scared did you know tom was in the no kid no not anymore um so it's vanderpump rules secrets revealed the backdrop is sir I love these little interstitial shots that they put in really quickly. It's like shaky shots of drinks, well lit and club lights, but it's all kind of like uh, shaky. So it kind of looks like, uh, you know, the, the somebody from the club is roofied the cameraman. It's really weird. The producer, producer Jerry, who producer Jerry, producer Natalie, Alex Baskin, everybody at Evolution, my my I don the cat my hat is off to you. You guys killed it. But every time in these talking heads, it's producer Jerry's voice, just so you know. And Jerry's like, Lisa, we had a lot of secrets revealed this season that we weren't expecting. And Lisa's getting touched up while we see her tits. And she's like, definitely one too many for my liking. <laughs> and Jerry's like, did you ever expect that when we started this season that we'd end up where we are? Like, what has happened? I never expected when we started this whole show. We're in the business of show. That was 11 years ago that I'd be sitting in this seat. I think soon it will be Vanderbilt rules. And I'll be walking here with a Zimmer frame. Which, by the way, at this point, Ken does walk in with a Zimmer frame. You know something's about No, Ken, no. But a Zimmer frame, they show a picture is a walker with wheels. And Lisa is just that fa fancy that she's like, a Zimmer frame? 
which um, there is an announcement next week. Uh, Lisa Vanderpump is releasing her own line of Vanderpump Zimmer frames. So if anybody in your family needs a walker, please consider. You know she makes the best rosé, Pinot Grigio, Chardonnay, but look what she can do with Zimmer frames. You know, it's fun to, to watch people uh, get older on these things. Anyway, she goes, anyway, let's get started. Everybody thinks it's so strange that Ariana and Sandoval are living together post-breakup, but huh, Katie and Schwartz did it first. Ooh. Six months before production season 10. This is a question I have. Uh, if anybody in production is listening, I think there might be a few. Can you tell me, because this is like not like Sheena's vlog for YouTube. This is actually production footage where they mic'd Schwartz and Katie up. And this is six months before production. So I'm curious if just like picking up cameras for Scandal, they picked up cameras for this because they needed to capture some sort of thing for the divorce thinking ahead to season 10. So I am curious about this. And when I get somebody on my show from production, I will be asking that question. The song plays like, I don't want to, I don't want to play anymore. You just like to sink and stare and it's got to end. That's not me making up. That was, it's like a very, it's a sad song. And we focus in on framed photos showing their life. First one is Katie. Like she's whispering in Schwartz's ear. Another one of Schwartz, Katie. Uh, this isn't Terry. I think it may be Schwartz's mom with the word love labeling the frame below it. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of these things from home goods. It's like a live, laugh, love. I've had them in class places. We see a small whiteboard with handwriting on it with things like, Bubba, I heart you. And Bubba, I heart you too. And I heart you both. Signed Lala. And I love three. I love all three of you and Gordo and Butter. And then what they said, heart from Dana. And then we want to shoot you, Jason and Allie, with a picture of a movie camera. And we also see a Coachella wristband hanging in the corner, which was that a clue? Was that a clue about anything? Anyways, you know, these things, these artifacts from relationships. Um, I mean, this scene, especially as somebody that's been through divorce and been in, you know, it really does. I was like, man, you know, it's fun to like laugh about these things, but you know, you're like, Oh God, I just remember the feeling and like put, you know, moving things and artifacts from your relationship when things were good. And also just like that, I got to tell you that thing, the whiteboard where everybody was writing on it. I'm like, come on guys. Like, can we just erase that? Like we, you know, like you guys left that up and, and um, I don't know. It was dark. I will say the, um, the picture though of, Katie whispering in Tom's ear, like, I'm such a goof, you guys, but I think you probably already know where this is going. I was like, can I buy that? Like, I was like, I'll, you know, cause they're like, I don't know what to do with that. I was like, I'll take it. I mean, could you imagine what a conversation piece? Like somebody walks in, you're like, um, is that, um, <laughs> this might be crazy. It probably isn't right. This is probably pop art, but is that, is that Katie uh, Maloney and, and Tom Schwartz. Um, oh yes. Uh, thank you for noticing my art. Um, yeah. Uh, I made an offer through Christie's auctions and I won. <laughs> so um, no, but I seriously would buy that, which is so dark. I also like for a long time, I've talked multiple times that I wanted Sheena and Mike Shea's wedding, you know, the, all the wedding uh, things she had in the old apartment. I was like, yeah you guys aren't using them. Can I have them? And I think she like gave away a couple, but I was like, I want that fucking like, I mean, to me, that's how goofy I am. I always talk about having a reality, um, a reality show museum, but also just a Vanderpump rules museum. Like I love shit like that, by the way, you might hear, um, a little snores in the background. That's my dog, Brooklyn, like who I said is out. So just let you know, I hear her snoring right now. So I don't want to get any nasty notes. Schwartz is in his room, which, by the way, has a full pregnancy pillow. This guy has a full pregnancy pull pillow that I was like, dude, that is wild. Like, and I wonder if he got that because he was used to sleeping with Katie. Oh, she's really snoring now, you guys. Um, but he has a stuffed teddy bear uh, and then his dogs, Butters and their dogs, Butters and Gordo. And he lets out a huge sigh and he uses the Tom Schwartz baby voice. He's like, Bob, Bob. It's also the dog voice of like, Bob. Uh, and Katie's in her room, which I think is possibly the master bedroom. It's like, huh? And Schwartz kind of walks over and he kind of knocks like, Bob, hey, are you hungry? He like, baby, because he's not like, hey, you hungry? Like he normally is like, hey, Bob, you hungry? And she's like, uh, I will be. Are you? And he's like, yeah. 
And then Kate in the talking head says, it's been two and a half months since we officially separated and we're still living together. By the way, Kay, Tom and Ariana are still technically living together. They are just nowhere in the state of this, you know, like they're actually able to cohabitate at this point. Schwartz is like, oh, let's get sushi. Sushi sounds good. And Katie's like, sushi does sound good. They're both kind of doing these baby voices back and forth. But Katie continues in a talking head. It's not ideal, but we're going to list our house. And honestly, it's been a little nice to sort of like slowly break up rather than cold turkey. And George is like, I was joking around with Stassi the other day. And she's like, listen, maybe as a couple, you guys were not goals, but as divorcees, you guys are fucking goals, which really does sound very much like Stassi. <laughs> like, I'm like... Yeah, that's that sounds like Stassi, but uh, Katie's like, I know, and she's smiling. So it's like, what do we do with like cute, sentimental shit like that? I'm like, sell it to Ryan Bailey. Are you kidding me? And he's like, you know, what do you do in a relationship where you still love each other, but you're divorcing? And they show that picture again of Katie whispering in Schwartz's ear, hanging on Katie's wall. I'm only imagining the whispering was like. Dude, stop getting wasted and cheating on me and fucking start like taking your life seriously. Probably not, but that's my, you know, Katie's like, I don't exactly know, but I think you can keep it and hang on to it until it doesn't make sense anymore. And Schwartz is like, like if I start dating someone or something, like, let me give you a hypothetical, Katie. What if there's this man named Josh? And J but the hypothetical moment in his date later on in this episode blows me away. I just want now Schwartz to do hypotheticals everywhere. Um, okay, Katie, let me give you a hypothetical. This guy Josh is with this girl. They divorce, but then they have knickknacks, paddywax all over. What do you do with those knickknacks? Where do you go? What <laughs> it's like Schwartz? I love I here's the deal. I'm making jokes, but obviously this is deep pain for both of them. I am very curious and, and I hope they never share what the actual conversations were like when this was initially brought up. And, and I just imagine how many late nights they had talking about this and how it would be and how it would look. And, you know, um, you know, and like I always said, like sometimes dudes will be so horrible that they will force a woman's hand sometimes of like, you know, Katie says here in a second about her own life about, you know, like, and I think that takes such bravery for somebody to be like, I, I, I really, I really, I really love myself enough to want more than this. And I've given so many years to this. And while I will always love this person, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep being sad about this person when there are so many other amazing things in my life or things that I have not even discovered yet. And I think this season above all really shown, uh, really shined a different light on Katie Maloney which I'm so excited to see how she expands on that in season 11, because we've really kicked Katie around at times we have, I mean, like it, it, and also Schwartz is so damn charming that it was sometimes easy to do, you know, like he was the fun one and she was like the, you know, like, Oh, she was being, you know, like the shrew or something. And now you see it from a whole different angle. It always makes you like, we'll, we'll never do this, but it tries to make you look at things, 360 instead of just myopically on just one point. Um, this is additional footage from, by the way, this is the Peacock supersized version. The Peacock version had some really good, just little moments within these scenes that they added in. And Schwartz is like, oh, I have no desire to be with another human being. Ugh. I do want to point out Schwartz has had desires to be with other human beings during their relationship. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. And Schwartz is like, where are you from? Shut up. I don't want to fucking know where you're from, what you do. I don't want to hear what you like. Like, I don't want to ever do that again, ever, 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 ever until I get to Sheena's wedding. No, and other places too. Uh, Katie's like, yeah. And Schwartz is like, have you gone on any dates? Schwartz's full fist is in his mouth. He loves touching his mouth. I do too, actually. Katie goes, do you want to know? And Schwartz with his, you know, she's like, yeah and katie's like you do he's like yeah and katie smiles she's like yeah and she smiles so innocently it's not like a punishing yeah she's like yeah and he's like "Ooh, are you kidding me oh and katie immediately frowns and she was like i wish i wouldn't have asked 
Katie's like, why are you asking that? And she's like, because I thought the answer was like, no, I don't know. I thought we would wait till we moved out of the house before we went on any dates. And this is probably one of the moments, remember, that Sandoval's like, dude, you were fucking dudes in that house while you still live together, dude. If you're not going to tell me what I did. You know that shit at the reunion? Oh, I just woke my dog. Okay, good. I'm sorry. Um, Katie's like, am I not allowed to go on dates? And she was like, no, of course you're allowed. Um, at this point now, one of the dogs, Gordo or Butter, I'm so sorry, I don't know which is which, uh, has their eye on a stuffed animal on the bed at this point. And uh, there's magic happening. There's chemistry happening. You know, Schwartz and Katie may be apart, but... Gordo or Butters and this stuffed animal, they are just giving each other eyes at this point. I don't know if you noticed this. Uh, Schwartz in the talking head is like, you know, when she told me we were getting a divorce, I literally got up. I had to physically walk away to another <laughs> because I was just in denial. I couldn't handle what she said. And then we're back in the scene and Schwartz with his head down, holding it with his hands. He's like, okay. He's like actually crying. And I felt like this was very real, but also... Also, to do that in front of cameras and to have that kind of vulnerable moment. I mean, Schwartz is that dude. He is just so charming that he does, even in the midst of tragedy and like stuff that he caused, you know, he does have these really, you know, he'll, he'll, he's winning moments where you're like, ah, oh, man, if you could just pull your shit together, dude. Uh, Schwartz continues in a tongue and head, we were building this life together. We have our dream home. We were going to have kids and just live fucking happily ever after. And now I just, I don't know how to be without Katie, you know? It's like, that was my rock that yelled at me. <laughs> Schwartz is now crying, sniffling at the foot of Katie's bed. Katie in the talking head, she is crying. And I thought this was so powerful. She says, I feel happier now because I've given myself permission to be. I feel empowered because I can be myself now. She's saying this through tears and do things for myself and make myself feel happy. And I'm not waiting for someone to come home or waiting for someone to like grow up or whatever it is. And her voice is cracking, but it's like, yeah, I'm not waiting for this man to make me happy. I'm going to make myself happy, which is so fucking strong. I can't, so not, I can't even get out of bed. It's fucking hard. And Schwartz still with his head, but he's like, sorry, oh, I shouldn't have talked about this stuff. Oh, and, um, and just so you know, um, you know, the dog Gordo or Butters fully humping this animal, like whatever is going on with Schwartz is like Gordo or Butters, whichever, just going to town on this stuffed animal. Like, my God, is that, I mean, like this, I don't even think they wore protection. It was like, argh, argh, and Schwartz is like crying. It was like the weirdest thing. Just going to town on this poor stuffed animal. Um, you know, I believe you know, like I, I, there was consent, so don't worry about that, but it is wild to have him in tears and just watch this dog go into town on this stuffed animal, man. Um, Katie continues in her talking head. I love him and I'm always going to love him, but it's, I've been defending this relationship for years. She says, and George is like, I'll let you have your space. And he goes and sulks off to his guest bedroom with his pregnancy pillow, and Katie whispers to herself, she's like, this is why I need to move out. And then we hear Schwartz in the hall going like, oh, God, oh, man. I mean, that is wild. And it's it's one of those things, too, that I think Schwartz knew that was the right move because he wasn't fighting to get her back, you know, at that moment. And I think he knew it was the right decision. And I always have held close this theory of Schwartz would have stayed with Katie probably forever. But I don't think he, I don't, I just don't think he would have had the balls to do this. And I think he would have continued to mistreat in certain ways. And, and I do hope for people like Schwartz where, you know, you hope for him that he can actually learn from this. And it kind of bummed me out in an earlier episode of Schwartz and Sandy's where he's like, I don't need therapy. Schwartz and Sandy's is my therapy. And I'm like, no, therapy is your therapy. And it's, you can do it. It's like therapy is yay. Therapy. 
Now we're back to Lisa. This season seemed to be a lot about out with the old and in with the new, whether it was friendships or relationships or even Zom Sandoval's zombie little apartment. Oh, my God. If those walls could talk, he probably wouldn't get his deposit back. I always picture her like Dr. Evil. He's like, with the little pinky in the mouth. Wink. Um... At this point, also, in Lisa's talking head, she's fully topless. Boobs are just hanging completely out. She does disrobe more and more throughout the talking head at the end, and don't show this to the kids, fully nude. Bush, everything. It's just, it's too much. And that's why Peacock, as much as I've loved the supersized episodes and the cursing, I just, I draw a line at full nude of the Unleashed of Vanderpump. Did anybody else see, did anybody else just get so offended by that? I'm just, I'm waiting for the one person of like, are you kidding me? Did that really happen? My God, I've got to get Peacock. So now we are in Tom Sandoval's historical shitty apartment that we have kind of grown up with, with as well as he has. Ariana lived there with him. Dodie lived there with him. I mean, if those walls could talk, I mean, listen, think about it. That's the couch where Dodie and Jack's watch drive, which by the way, big breaking news. I will be on Christian Dodie's podcast, Sex and love and other things, I believe I might be, but it's going to be out this Wednesday. We recorded it yesterday with her and her dude. And it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was very, uh, you know, man, these people, it's wild to talk to these people. And I hope you like it. Make sure you tune in because I'm not a Vanderpumper. I'm not a big celebrity. So go support and let Kristen know you liked it. Hopefully you like it, but I want, I always want to be good for anybody else's show, but you know, especially Dodie, and you, you don't want to bomb, especially I'm going to be like the post scandal guest where uh, <laughs> post scandal guest where it's like, who the fuck is this dude, man? We're you fucking had Lala on last week. And now it's fucking this dude. Fuck that. Anyways, they buzz over to the apartment that Sandoval used to live in and Sandoval opens the door and walks in and inside it's just you can just smell like it's you can already tell it smells like hot dogs and sadness it's wild inside everything's off the walls things are stacked in the corner there's boxes furniture scattered around a dirty stove you see a dead body in the corner trash all over the floor uh, and there's a dead cockroach which i was like holy shit Jax Taylor did make an appearance. I'm joking, Jax. That's just joking. They did do DNA testing on this apartment later because it was like, what are the origins of this? And Ariana's with him and he let Jeremy, and, and if you listen to the podcast for a couple of years when Sandoval was on, he let us know that he still owned the lease on this and lent it out to Jeremy, Ariana's brother, to live there. And like I said, I man, I would kill to have Tom Sandoval back in there on season 11, going back to his roots, trying to discover where it all went wrong. Wouldn't it be like, wouldn't that be amazing? I always had that, like, wouldn't it be fun for us, the audience, to take away all their brand deals, all their money, make them go move back into their old shitty places and make them actually work at Sir for a season? And it'll be like, Sir, fantasy camp. You know, like, I would love to see how they freak out. You know, like, it would just be so great. Um so uh, Ariana's like, why wouldn't he just take that couch to his new place and just like use it? I don't understand why he would leave that there. My thought, you'd already say it with me. Why can't I buy that couch? Was that the couch? With the, was that the drive couch? That couch should be in the Smithsonian. I'm like Indiana Jones. That belongs in a museum. Are you kidding me? Sandoval and I talking heads like, even though Ariana and I have moved out of our apartment, the infamous apartment, <laughs> Jeremy, Ariana's brother, has been living there for the last couple of years. And he's in his mustache and these talking heads with his like Miami Vice, you know, T-shirt. Uh, you know, he hates T-shirts, but he's wearing one. And the, 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 you know, just very dapper with the green. And I'm like, man, you know, he blew, he got, he did get too lost in the sauce. He started thinking he was too good looking. Like he made me believe that that mustache was working. He made me believe all of it was working. And now I look at him like, ah, oh, sleazy, just fucking sleaze. Um, we get a flashback to Jeremy, Ariana's brother. Uh, he's like, yeah, so I guess we're neighbors now, huh? And Billy Lee was like, she's like, I know, I'm so excited. Remember when Billy Lee and Jeremy, like, I thought that was going to be a thing for a second. Uh, Sam was like, Schwartz is coming by, Ariana. He's bringing the tools. And Ariana's like, he can take apart your old bed. Sandoval continues in a talking head. Now he's moving out and I have a closet of stuff that I never went through. And I have to say goodbye to a place that I've lived longer than any house I've ever lived in, even growing up. And we see in his messy closet, you see Coachella boxes, which 
I used to go to Coachella all the time. So they, what they do, they mail out this box. It's really cool way to package. And it has your wristband and it has a couple of like, you know, like schedules and little posters and you, the boxes, I had like 10 of those boxes. And I will say in regards to uh, Schwartz and Katie, I threw away all my, like I was, I thought I would save those for the rest of my life because I'm weird and a hoarder. And uh, I remember packing up things and I was like, why the fuck am I even keeping these? And I threw them all out. And uh, I don't regret that, but I remember, you know, those totems that make you feel like more of the person that you think you want to be or are. And anyways, Schwartz comes in, he's like, oh, 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 what's up? And Ariana's like, I know, right? It's crazy. And Schwartz was like, I couldn't find parking. It triggered my PTSD here. And I did like, I did like, um, I did like this scene because it made you realize how long these people have been friends, even before the cameras, like they, they did have all of these memories. What's that bare naked lady song? Like that old apartment na, 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 na. kids. There used to be a band called the bare naked ladies and they have a song. They have a song called that old apartment. Look it up. But it reminded me of this, all of these memories there pre-show. And that's why I think it makes this show work because they've had so many real fucking relationships. It's all based on these real relationships. I mean, like, I always think like, man, if me and my group of guy friends that all came from uh, Arizona to LA, you know, if we had cameras on us that first year, it would have been horrible. We were really boring as a group, friend group, nothing like this, but uh, it would have been fun. Guys, we were so geeky and so nerdy. We were in our 20s and we would go. There was this place at the Mondrian, it used Sky Bar. It was like the big hip club. And every, you know, like we would go, we would have nothing to do. We were all broke as a joke. And we'd go up and like go like walking on bars on Sunset. There used to be a bar called Dublin's, which Jay Z rhyme checks in like, Bublin's and Dublin's can't deny me. Why would you want me to leave me? Used, you know, Dublin's, it got torn down. Oh God, the stories I have about LA, there used to be a Monday night comedy night at Dublin's. And this is before Dane Cook actually like became successful. He was like a comedian that, I mean, I watched, there was a Monday night comedy night at Dublin's and you went to see this guy, Dane Cook. It was like, who is this guy? And he was so fucking funny back then. And I don't know what happened over the years. Cause I'll listen to him now. I'm like, why did I, fu I didn't, that's not what, but anyways, we would go up to the Mondrian Sky Bar and we would just fuck with the bouncers and we'd be like DiCaprio party of 20 and they'd be like, okay, guys, it's not funny anymore. Like that's the kind of nerds we were and still are. I have a podcast. Um, so uh, Schwartz is like, dude, this apartment's empty. I miss the sheet, man. Oh, I miss Jax's room. They put a sheet up and Scan was like, I know, dude, there was a sheet right there. And Schwartz is like, I miss the fucking giant TV. Oh, oh, oh is the ACs kicking? And Sam was like, dude, look how gross the AC machine is. And it really is just fucking filthy. And I've got to go back and watch old episodes, but did he keep that apartment as shitty as Jeremy did? Like, was it, cause I always remember it being like that apartment you move into in your twenties. It's not special. And I always like was shocked how long he stayed there. And I asked him and Ariana, cause I was like, where does Tom keep all of his costumes and his lightsabers? Cause he has a storage facility. He had a storage facility that kept all of his costumes at. Cause I was like, how much storage can you really get in this place? Um, so anyways, remember the thing with the apartment was that if you turn on the microwave and the AC, the whole thing would short and they test it out, which is hysterical and it doesn't actually trip. So, you know, congrats to whatever that apartment building is. It would be funny if they did try it that one time and it burned down the entire apartment complex. Um, we do see a flashback of those moments of him, you know, ta Ariana talking to her mom, Sandoval's putting a, a cup in the microwave and it completely goes black. Um, and Schwartz, uh, you know, everything's working well. Uh, so when Sandoval has to move back in there, it's all good. Sandoval and I talking heads like the times that I've gone through in my life, that apartment literally made me who I am today. It was like a halfway health for all my friends. Like we grew up in that place. We watched drive here, dude. They flash back to Schwartz on his knee, holding a takeout order food, a burrito in 2015. And Schwartz is like, Hey, will you continue being my friend? Uh, did he propose with a burrito to Sandoval before he actually proposed to Katie and Sandoval like, we grew up in this place. And then we see in 2014, Dodie yelling, you just want me to tell everyone I fucked Jax. And Sandoval like, no, admit it to me, dude. And Dodie's like, I'm not lying to you, Tom. Unfortunately, she was lying. And, and then Sandoval, uh, continues in a talking head. And I loved it, dude. 
I loved every moment, dude. Every stupid, trashy. I do have a question, though. Did this occur to you as well? If he still had the lease and moved out, but he had the keys, dude, go make that your stupid fuck pad with Raquel. Why bring it into your fucking home? I don't want the traffic, dude. I live in the valley, and that's like in Hollywood. And sometimes with traffic, you know, like, come on, dude. Like, but why not make that your fucking shag pad? Like, was it, were you really giving up the lease? How many, like, cause this is all in that same time frame. And I do believe still to this day, we will find out that time frame gets pushed further and further back. We also see this is the apartment that Sandoval shaved his uh, forehead in the mirror. Oh man, it would be amazing if Sandoval completely lost his shit. And then like, he's like, just, he just goes on a sabbatical and he comes back and his forehead has a full beard. Cause like, I stopped shaving my uh, forehead, dude. Just letting everything be natural, dude. Yeah, he's just got a big forehead mustache. Um, we... <laughs> he grows back the mustache, and then he has a forehead mustache. <laughs> Schwartz's mom has got it going on. Look at my mustache on my forehead. Schwartzy, can't you see? I've let my forehead grow. <laughs> Holy shit, you guys. Sandoval's back. He's coming into Schwartz and Sandy's for the first time tonight. Door kicks in. Holy shit. What the fuckers? It's me, Tom Sandoval. Yeah, that's right. Got a mustache on my lip and a mustache on my forehead. What's up, fuckers? Let's talk to Greg, dude. I own 8% of this place. <laughs> did you guys listen last week? I forgot that I even did this and somebody reminded me because I'll just like just talk. I don't write out notes for like the things I'm going to do. And I forgot that I did Raquel. <laughs> Raquel. <laughs> Sorry. I was like Raquel in her <laughs> mental health facility. I was like, that's the real question. Like Raquel has not spoken at all. What's she going to come out like? And I was like, wouldn't it be crazy if she, her face was tattooed, you know, head shaved. And she's like a deep fucking voice now. No more shaky voice. She's like, what's up, fuck nuts? It's Raquel. You want to smell what Raquel is cooking? What up? Fuck you, Peter. Fuck you, Schwartz. You're all pussies. Give me a beer. I got a fart. <laughs> So many memories in this apartment, you guys. So many memories. We also see a flashback of Katie going like, I don't think someone's saying they're going to pass judgment on me. And Sam was like, no, dude, I have to. And Katie's like, I pass judgment on people who can't get over shit. And then Sandoval continuing in the talking head of like funny memories. And then we see a cute thing of Ariana laying down to snuggle with Sandoval and Jeremy, her brother comes out with like little like banana hammock. He's like, what's up guys. And then Sandoval finishes talking head. He's like, just all these amazing moments. It'll always be a part of me. This is additional uh, footage from Peacock. There was another memory of DJ James Kennedy walking in. And Ariana's like, welcome to the concert. And DJ uh, Sandoval's playing that dick flute, the wooden dick flute that Logan broke and had to put back together after the breakup. And DJ James Kennedy's like, the dick flute. Yeah, dick flute. Guys die, dick flute. Uh, but it seemed like, you know, a lot of fun memories. Now we're back to the present. Sandoval's digging around in the closet. He's like, Schwartz, dude. Sandoval pulls out a funnel with a green tube attached. And Schwartz's like, oh my God, it's the original? I mean, dude, think about how many species are living on it. Because you know those fuck nuts aren't like cleaning out the green beer bong. Like this is potentially how COVID got started. Like this is not funny. Ariana goes, oh my God, this is the one. This is the one from Hawaii. And we flash back to 2016 where Schwartz is like, this is a true leader. He leads by example. And Sandoval's ho host hoisting the bong and gulping the liquid into his mouth. And Lisa's son, Max, is like, geez, geez, start with your tongue. Start with your tongue. And then Schwartz takes his turn and sucks down a beer from it. Back to present, Schwartz is rinsing out the funnel. Thank God. Um, all just old beer bottles and mugs just are scattered around the counter. And Schwartz is like, uh, there's two beers left. Ariana, you want to do one? She's like, hell no. And Schwartz is like, I mean, I don't want to do this, but I have to. Huh, I forgot how to pour, pour a beer bong. And Sandoval's like, since you're never going to funnel a beer, help me do one. Which I wonder if this was Sandoval's like, dude, fuck Ariana, dude. 
pinned and batteried, won't fucking do a beer bong, dude. The t-shirt thing, it's crazy. Schwartz kneels and puts the tube into his mouth and swallows it in seconds, but like can't finish the whole thing. He's like, ah, ah. he's like, I still got it. I still got it. And they're talking to him, he's like, I don't got it. Additional footage from Peacock. Um, they're doing more uncovering. And this was sad. Schwartz is like, uh, Ariana's like, oh my God. And Schwartz is like, from the wedding. And Ariana, Ariana's holding up the tea towel, the wadded cloth in her hands. Um, and Schwartz is like, oh, okay. It's no, it's okay. Because they had these tea towels that they had printed on it. Um, We're getting married. Join us in the woods. Let's celebrate. Katie and Tom, August 17th, 2016. And that was their wedding invite. And I will remind you guys, Laura Marie Shane Halls from Sex Unique Podcast. I think got into an argument with Katie back in the day, maybe on Twitter. I, this is so many years ago, but Laura in one of Laura in one of her recaps, I think said something about these are like basically, you know, cum towels, um, which is wild. And I think Katie didn't, didn't like that. Obviously. Um, I'm sure Laura has talked about that this week. So you should go listen to, to sexy unique podcast as well. Um, but we see Tom crying again. Like it's very two back-to-back -back scenes where Tom is crying. And um, she's like, shit, man. Oh, oh, and all of a sudden Gordo and butters comes into the room and starts humping stuffed animals. I don't even know how they got there. Um, okay. Uh, so Ariana's like, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. You do feel for Schwartz in these moments. He's like, dude, I'm fine. Sorry, I'm in my sixth month. That one just caught me off guard. And Ariana's like, it caught me. I didn't think we were going to see that. And Schwartz's like, man, it was like a lifetime ago. Once again, I am willing to buy things like that. Like, you know, it's like, I feel like I'm cash for gold. I'm like, cash for VPR memorabilia. <laughs> Schwartz and I talking to it's like the tea towel. It's like one of the last remnants of my former love, my marriage, my happiness. It's really hard to let it all go, you know? Back in the scene, Schwartz is like, it's the end of an era. And Ariana's like, that's all she wrote. And Schwartz is like, had a good run in here. And Santa was like, dude. Schwartz is like, I'm going to miss it, man. And Ariana's like, bye. And Schwartz is like, not that much, though. I'm not going to miss it that much. Ariana's like, not that much. Bye. Never see you again. Man, it is an end of an era, but also just we didn't know things that were to come. Also, why didn't Schwartz move into this place? Like, why? I mean, like a Valley Village. Fuck that. This is Hollywood. I would have killed to have moved into this place at a time. Schwartz carries a giant shoebox out of the apartment. Sandoval is carrying nothing odd. And uh, you hear the squeaky door close. Um, the producer, Jerry, back in the talking heads, like, what's one of the funnier scenes that didn't make it onto the show? And Lisa's laughing. Oh, 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 oh my dear boy, the laughs. Well, I think it has to be when Peter was at the Daily Mail party, Raquel actually broke up with him. But because he was so drunk, or he chose to forget it, selective memory, he's asked Raquel to actually break up with him again, Nicolaine. They swing over to serve or see you next Tuesday with James, DJ James Kennedy, who's in full throttle. You know, the place is packed. It's bumping. Peter yells over the loud music like, hey, James, how's it going? And James like, going well. How are you, you fat fuck? And Peter's like, uh, good, good, James. So um, I got to ask you, um, I got to talk to you for a second, bud. Do you run to mommy for everything? And we flash back to the previous day when Peter's in a conversation with Lisa. And Peter's like, the whole Raquel situation, I'm just curious as to who told you that, Lisa. And Lisa's like, James told me. And Peter's like, James did. Are you upset, Peter? I was upset someone telling you about my private life. Back in this scene, DJ James Kennedy's like, so are you the manager right now? Are you acting immature? And Peter's like, Yes, I'm not acting immature. I'm just wondering, like, why would you run to Lisa and tell Lisa? And James is like, about what? And Peter's like, me going out with Raquel. And James is like, first of all, you don't need to come at me aggressive because I'm working. Secondly, I didn't run to Lisa about anything, Peter. I did not. Flashback to two days earlier. And Lisa's like, and you're doing well, it's uh, DJ James Kennedy. And he's like, yes. And Allie's there as well. And Lisa's like, Raquel's working there. Well, that's okay. What about her dating Peter then? She's not dating Peter. Well, yeah, they are. They're inseparable, that fat fuck. 
And Allie's like, they just make out when they're drunk. Back to present. And James is like, I don't give a flying fuck if you were making out with Raquel right there, if you're porking her right there, if you're putting in the pita sausage right there in front of me. Don't care. She's not even into you, bro. She's told me like a million times how she's not into you. And he's like, okay, all right. Uh, she told me she was going to break your heart. She's like, oh my God, I'm going to break that fat fuck's heart if he thinks that. And Peter's like, then why would she? I don't fucking know, dude. I've got my own girlfriend, Ali. She's beautiful and equine. Her skin is like porcelain, literally a porcelain doll. I've got that for a girlfriend. I don't care about your relationship. Don't come at me in my booth. I love that he's like, my DJ booth, where I do business. This is a nine to five right here. Do you know how much magic I create for this company of sir? Don't come into this booth and disrespect me. And Peter's like, I won't. And he kind of huffs away. And James resumes playing the music. And he's like, across the galaxy, yeah. We have magic in the blood. He's Across the galaxy, across the galaxy, guys died. Worm with a mustache. Peter's now in the kitchen, which this really is completely uh, unprofessional. He's like, uh, hey, Raquel, how you doing, bud? How, what's going on, Raquel? And Raquel's like, good. And Peter's like, uh, good? Huh. How are you? Um, good, good. Um, huh, huh. You just see the sweat and nerves, you know, like me all the time. And Raquel's like, good. And Peter's like, are you busy? Like, I don't know, doofus, you're the manager. Is she busy? And Raquel's like, um, no. Huh, what do you need? And Peter's like, well, can we talk really quickly, bud? And Raquel's like, yeah, sure. Well, let's go outside. And they go to the Sir Alley, just so iconic. And I wonder if Peter, when he steps back there and the cameras are on, he's like, don't blow it, Peter. This is your moment. Peter's like, okay. Um, So first off, just so you get started, I don't remember what happened the other night. And this is where the other night of the Daily Mail, when Raquel broke up with him. And Raquel's like, you don't remember? And Peter's like, actually, actually, I'll tell you the truth. I don't remember a thing from that conversation. And they flash back to that night. And uh, Raquel's like, I really don't see a future between us. And I just kind of like, want to break things off right now before it gets complicated. As Avril Lavigne says, do you agree? I agree. You agree? Okay. And that was the scene. And Raquel's like, wait, are you telling me that you blacked out? Yeah. Shut up. Even Raquel's like, are you fucking kidding me? And Peter's like, well, yeah. I sorry, Peter. Peter. Peter goes, yeah, I was a little bit. And Raquel's like, wait, why did it get to that point? Raquel asking like a question of like, Peter, why are you fucking blacking out at a Daily Mail party and actually having full conversations where you don't seem drunk? And I want to point out too, the first episode of the season when they go to that place where DJ James Kennedy is spinning, uh, that ho little hotel thing. Peter that night also said he blacked out. He's like, I've got to get you those nachos. I blacked out, bud. <laughs> like, does Peter, is that Peter's thing? He just goes to places and like blacks out, yet he completely seems completely not incapacitated. Like, is that Peter's special gift? He's like, I don't remember the last six years of my life. I've been blacked out every night. Or is he telling women that he's blacked out just so nobody can ever break up with him? Like, you know, every time Peter feels like a breakup's coming, he's like, can I get a shot? Uh, I'm going to use that as an excuse later. Uh, sorry, I I blacked out. So whatever you said does not count. Okay? It does not count. That is law. Peter goes, uh, I was enjoying myself. I was having a good time. Um, you know, it, 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 was, it was totally fine. Uh, you know, I just, I like to stand alone and get drunk. Uh, just get fucking pissed drunk. You couldn't see it, but I had pissed myself. So that probably would have been the clue you were looking for in terms of me binge drinking into a blackout at 8 PM at night. Uh, we get a flashback to James going, is Peter all right? He looks like he's crying over there at the daily mail party back in this scene. And Peter's like, I don't remember exactly what was said. And Raquel's like, ha, oh no. Uh, Peter looks worried and confused. Like, oh, what are you going to tell me here? You know, he's like, wait a sec. I, uh, I just told my mom about you. I was planning on proposing. It's going to be the season finale of Vanderpump. Because like, do you want me to tell you again? 
And he's like, yeah, sure, do it. This guy loves punishment. He's like, let me get a drink first. And Raquel's like, um, I just came to the conclusion that I feel like you don't. Uh, I mean, I don't. Peter's like really listening, is active listening. And Raquel's just awkwardly smiling. She's like, see our dating situation going anywhere in the future. And Peter looks at her sideways like, what? And he's like, okay, well, my whole thing was what Kennedy just told me. And she's like, what did he tell you? Well, he said, not only were you never into me, then he said you were afraid of breaking my heart. And I mean, why would you say that to your ex fiance Which is a great question. And also, Raquel does like completely admit it. Like, she'll lie about big affairs, but she'll be like, okay, well, I did say that. And Peter goes, no offense, Raquel, but you're not going to break my heart. You're not going to break old Peter heart. Peter's heart. Peter Madrigal, you're not going to break this heart. This, people have tried, but it's just not going to happen, okay? Nobody breaks this guy's heart. It's unbreakable, okay? <laughs> I'm so lonely. I am just so damn lonely. I can't seem to make things work. Not your problem. Uh, oh, boy. Who else is working tonight in terms of waiters? Not your problem. I'm just going to try to talk to some girls in there. Anyways, um, Raquel's laughs. He's like, okay, good. And as far as breaking your heart, I know that you're like not in love. I know that like, I feel like we're on the same page. And this is the point where Peter goes, <laughs> he creepy. He's like, oh God. Oh God. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. And Raquel's like, honestly, I think James is just trying to get under your skin. Um, Everybody does. Uh, Juliana put in a note here that everybody says honestly on this show. Honestly, honestly. But nobody's actually honest on this show. Um, Peter's like, well, he's the one that went over to Lisa and told Lisa about our situation. Now Lisa's getting on my case for dating an employee. All right which I can't have. So now I have to kill you, <laughs> which I can't have. It's like, I can't have that kind of shit. Not getting back to the old boss. Lisa's going to just old. Yeah, I want to tell you one thing about Peter. You're not going to break this guy's heart. You're not going to get him fired from his job. Sir is in my blood. I'm going down with this place. Raquel goes, Oh, huh, maybe you should have thought about that before you asked me out. Oh, really, Raquel? Well, maybe you should have not fucked Tom Sandoval. Sorry, I just got... And Peter's like, well, I didn't think you were coming back. And Raquel's like, oh, no? And Peter's like, that's never, ever, ever going to happen again. <laughs> unless you say... Unless you give me the green light. <laughs> Raquel's laughing and does this shoulder tap to her chin. She's like, okay, good, cool. And she pageant smiles and curtsies out. And Lisa and I talking to It's like, I think it's a shame that Sheena and Katie aren't friends. They've been together through so much. So many more things that have had much more serious consequences than this. Sheena is guilty of instigating it, but why is Raquel sitting at the table who actually offered to make out with Schwartz? <laughs> Go figure. I love Lisa piecing it together. I'm like, why? What is I? What is I? The song that's playing, the lyrics are, Hey, baby, what's your phone number? Let me get your number so I can tell you mine. Hey, baby, you look so fly. What if next season Tom only comes back if it's Tom Sandoval and the most extras? He's like, dude, only one condition. If I'm, if you want this dude back, dude, Tom Sandoval and the most extras scores the entire season of the show. So I have this one song called Mustache. I got the Schwartz's mom thing. Um, I got the song Superstar, of course. But uh, we're working on some other things that um, that's pretty it's pretty cool. There's this one song that's called um, One Time. I just did it one time, which you've heard before. But then there's this other one that's like um, it's kind of like a more upbeat number with like, oh, I didn't like how the reunion went. So I was like, how do I get my message out? And then I got a call from somebody that was bald. Who could it be? Was it Dr. Evil? Who knows? It turns out it was Mr. Mandel. Mr. Mandel, what? You couldn't be. Was it Howie Mandel from America's Got T Island? Whoa, it was. So I went on this podcast with Howie Mandel and he asked me all the questions. I fucking rocked that interview. And then at the end, he said, Tom, 
what you doing with that mustache? And I said, I don't know, Howie. What would you like me to do? And he was like, shave it off. Shave it off. What are you talking about? The mustache has been with me since season 10. I have love for this mustache because I fell in love with Raquel's body. Going down on that girl with this mustache. I would always be like, Raquel, you want to take a mustache ride? And he's like, yeah, let's shave that off. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. And he put the lotion on. And then the band slows down. Goes, doo, doo, doo. Give me a backbeat, you guys. He puts the lotion on. The shaving lotion. And then I see him pull out a big razor. The same company that Ariana did a plug for later in the season. And he's like, Tom, you've been a very bad, bad boy. But I know what's going to make you cool if I take this mustache off your lip. And I don't know what's going to pick up your drool then. And he starts shaving. And I got to tell you, it was such an honor to have how a man shaved shave his mustache off. And then the podcast came out and it was universally loved. It helped to sell out shows from San Juan Capistrano to a show that we did for Hobo. Thank you, Howie. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you guys. They fly over to La Mesa Club and Restaurant. It's July. <laughs> it's July 28th, 2022. <laughs> Tell me the truth, you guys. Do you think I've got talent? <laughs> what can I do that song for America's Got Talent? I'm like, um, hello, Howie, Heidi, Simon. Um, I wrote this. <laughs> hey, Simon Cal, I wrote this song. Is that how he told you about his little podcast? <laughs> I don't I don't know about it. Howie, what is that little thing you're doing? <laughs> Oh my God, what if Tom Sandoval, the most extras on America's Got Talent? Oh my God, my dog's fully snoring again. Okay, so we're at this restaurant, July 28th, 2022. Four days, if you're count, keeping a score at home, before they go on Katie's Curls trip to Vegas. Remember, that triggers the guy, Guys Night, where Raquel went, and that is when the bone zone starts happening, potentially, even though Tom says it happens a week later at See You Next Tuesday, even though I think the bone zone happened that night at Guys Night, but whatever. Charlie is working at this place. Now, I knew Charlie was a bottle service girl waitress at another club. And I will tell you that Charlie has told me in the past that she made more money at this club than, you know, because like season 10 at the beginning, she wasn't really filming a lot. And that was by choice. Like, and she, I, I remember her saying like, well, I think I can, you know, I make more money potentially doing the bottle service. Like Charlie is one of the realer cast members on this. And that's why I do want her to sign up for season 11, even though I know she's on the fence because, and they, they want her back. But she realizes like there's personal pain here. And I think for Charlie, she is so real that she has her own shit going on and like her own things that she always is working on in terms of her own mental health. And sometimes this might not be the best thing for her. And I think that's such a smart way to look at it. But at the same time, you know, she said we were DMing earlier and, and she was like, well, there is going to be a writer strike happening. And who knows how long that's going to last? Because also she auditions for commercials, print models. She does the whole thing. So I hope she comes back. Um, but Charlie is greeting them as their server. And Lala's like, he looks so good, yo. And little Lala's like, what up, dude? <laughs> Can you see me? It's dark. And Ariana's like, is this the uniform? And Charlie's like, this is the uniform. And she was like, you look so good. And Charlie's like, thank you. You all do too. Uh, it's just a sexy black dress with, you know, under boob and cleavage showing. And Charlie's like, do you want me to choose your food to give like a vibe? Can we fucking stop saying the word fucking vibe in 2024, please? Let's get some drinks going. And they're like, yeah. And uh, so Lala's like, how are you feeling? She's like, I mean, I'm fine. I'm drained. It was a long day. And Lala goes, try and stay in a positive head spin. I don't want you to feel defeated. And she was like, well, that's honestly how I felt about Katie. I feel that I've apologized enough. I can't do it anymore. We get additional footage from Peacock right here. And Sheena and I are talking. And it's like, when Katie and I had this conversation in Vegas about Schwartz and Raquel, it was not just one comment that was a joke. And we are at the club. And she's like, she wants to see me in this light. She's not going to see me in any other 
away. She's telling Schwartz he's not allowed to hang out with me anymore. It was like, I wouldn't be upset if Schwartz and Raquel made out. You know what? Someone should actually make that happen. It was a full fucking conversation. Sure, the girl was wasted, but I'm sorry. I thought that that I thought that's when you tell the truth. That's the end of additional footage. And Lola's like, would I have initiated Schwartz and Raquel? Probably not. We get a flashback to Sheena's podcast featuring Schwartz. He's like, let's talk about Raquel. There's this rumor online saying you guys were at Coachella. And he's like, I wasn't at Coachella. And she's like, would you make the rumors true? And this is where Sheena, I, I talked about this on the Patreon. Sheena shows up to work, man. And I think sometimes in the past production has not um, given Sheena her proper due and they do a lot of editor trolls and I get it. And I've, I've enjoyed it like everybody else, but Sheena makes shit happen. Like Sheena's like, you don't want to film with, you don't want me to be like a lead in this. Well, I'll make myself invaluable. I will start shit. I mean, it's painful shit, but like, this is Sheena working right here in that scene. And Lola's like, well, so why is it she's not coming? Talking about Sheena on the girls trip, but Raquel, who was trying to make out with Schwartz, is like, it's okay. And Ariana goes, Sheena is bearing the brunt of the feelings. And Sheena's like, I know, say that to Katie, please. And Lala's like, your laser beams on the wrong bitch, yo. And she's doing the little gun hands, like, pew, pew. and little Lala's like, yeah, dude, laser beam, bitch. And Lala on the talking head's like, Sheena was only trying to facilitate it, yo, which is fucked up. But Raquel's the one who actually tried to make it happen. Flashback to Raquel at the Canyon Club that one of the first episodes when she's like, do you want to make out, Schwartz? And Schwartz is like, are we on, are we on camera, yo? Oh, oh okay. Oh, yeah. Like she really was. Remember, she was going for that. Like Raquel, I really am so curious when the Tom shit initially truly started. But also Raquel really had a death wish in certain, you know, she was going for, you know, she really was in a process of self-discovery. It was just all bad discoveries. Lala continues in a talking head. Katie, you got two hands. You would certainly be pointing at both. And Raquel's like, yeah, I was totally prepared for her to uninvite me to that trip. I forgot Raquel was in the scene. Uh, Sheena's like, well, I have to deal with this. We're going to have to like reconfigurate, which I don't think is a word, uh, the seating arrangement. You know, she's like, I don't want to, Katie, ah. And Ariana's like, well, let's switch now so it doesn't look like an obvious thing. They get up and swap seats as Katie arrives. And, you know, Lala's like, oh my God, you look hot, yo. And Sheena to Ariana's like, I'm glad I didn't wear that. <laughs> I have the same exact outfit, which is like a silky white low cut mini dress that ties up in the front. By the way, that's a Juliana Carosa note. I would not be able, I'd be like, she's fucking wearing and things that cover her the god parts um sheena and the talking head's like hmm and that dress looks familiar and they show a side-by-side -side photo of shenanigans her podcast and i guess she's wearing that in the cover art <laughs> she's like that looks familiar <laughs> i do think i wore it better in no possible imagination realm of imagination do i imagine that katie was like huh I'm going to show this person. I'm going to wear their shenanigans cover art. <laughs> I'll get her. Katie is sitting. She's like, it feels like I'm in another, you, you know, in the restaurant. Like I'm not in LA. And Charlie's like, well, I got a quick five minute break. Scoot your cooch. God, Charlie, stop making me love you more. Scoot your cooch. I've never heard of that. Then I was trying to think of things for guys. I was like, dock your cock. You know, like squeenish your penis. Like I had nothing, but I was like, scoot your cooch. Like, like fucking Shakespeare. Um, she's like, how are you? You know, talking to Katie. Did you ask Raquel about the Tom Schwartz situation? They're having separate conversations right now, you guys, the two groups. But Sheena is trying to listen in to what they're saying. And Katie's like, Raquel crossed the line and she apologized for doing that. Raquel also doesn't know me as well as Sheena does. Raquel so also, Raquel also likes like has sat and now listened to me. And Charlie's like, well, sometimes Raquel, she's like cardboard, you know? <sniffs> Boom. Damn. Charlie Burnett is my favorite person sometimes. Um, Charlie in a talking head goes, Raquel is being a card is being cardboard because it's like, she's only doing things that Sheena tells her to do, like hooking up with Schwartz and making a fool out of herself. I mean, shit. I mean, like she even Sandoval's like, hook up with me, dude. You know, she even did that. Like, I, I mean, I wonder if, if in a sense, this was Raquel's big moment to do something that she felt she chose herself in terms of sleeping with Sandoval because she does get egged on a lot to do things. It does seem like she is not manipulated, but easy to put thoughts into their head, you know? And Katie's like, she got lost in the sauce. Can we stop also saying lost in the sauce? 
But Raquel definitely got lost in that sauce. Charlie goes, she definitely got lost in the sauce. And Lola goes, what are you guys talking about, yo? And she's like, we're just talking about the guy Raquel is talking to who goes down on her really well. And Lola goes, is his name Schwartz? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> and then I was like, no, it's probably fucking Tom Sandoval. Right. Because Tom Sandoval was also like in the Howie Mandela thing was like talking about, like, dude, if you had sex with me, like I was just so out of practice, dude. I didn't have my mojo, dude. Like, you know, and he was admitting to watching porn in the bathroom and whacking off. And so me, I just have a feeling he was like doing every dirty, weird thing that he had seen in any of these videos uh, to, to Raquel to try to like, you know, like say that, like, dude, I'm a professional lover, dude. Do you see that at all? Am I off? I don't know. Charlie's like, everyone needs to take shots. We need to get them fucked up. And Katie laughs. And Charlie's like, should I just pour the bottle in Ariana's mouth? And Katie laughs again. And Lola goes, when I have sex, yo, I have to be on top. Because I got to do the rubbing or I'm not going to get off. And little Lola's like, yeah, you got to rub me, dog. <laughs> By the way, you see Raquel listening closely, like kind of taking notes about sexual situations. Um, and, this is, and Ariana goes, no, I don't come for, from penetration. And, uh, you know, listen, yeah, let's gather the kids around you guys. Uh, let Ryan Bailey teach your kids about their birds and the bees. This is Ryan Bailey, the sex expert. Um, but basically they're talking about what gets them off. And Ariana, the old woo woo, putting it in, putting it out is not doing it for Ariana. That's totally normal. And Lala goes, I got to get the rubber dub dub, yo. Yeah, bitch. And Ariana's like, unless it's penetration in the woo woo. And she points to her bottom. And you guys, I don't want to know this. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to know this. I missed this in the Glamour magazine cover story. I guess I missed it. Um, at first, I was thought she meant doggy style. I was like, she, you know, in doggy style, you guys, is where when you take um, two stuffed animals, <laughs> you know, it's, I, it's, I don't want to have this conversation. And, and, but, Sheena's like, oh, really? And Ariana's like, yeah, I'll come from that real fast. And I'm like, what? Ariana, they're talking to it's like, oftentimes when you go to like a really exclusive club, the front door is like where all the regular people will be going in. And then the back door is like where the really chic celebrities go in. And I'm like, what? Say what? Uh, the back door is all I can think about is back door teen mom, the Farrah Abraham video that, you know, literally launched her anal career <laughs> guys this is a sex positive thing i i you know i'm not but like ariana all of a sudden get you know like the anal queen all, i'm like what and then she's like the exclusive club and i'm like i've only been to the regular i've i've only been to the regular club i don't even know at this point i don't think i'll ever want to go to the exclusive club i don't i don't think i can afford it i don't i mean i don't want to get bottled like, ugh, like i couldn't you know like listen it's feels it's probably really tight back there. There's just not a lot of room. And, you know, a lot of weird things happen in the exclusive club. I don't want to do that. But I really a fascinating <laughs> like that to me was the secret revealed. I was like, OK, well, I'm done. See you guys next week. <laughs> like too many secrets revealed. Did you know Ariana was in the back door exclusive club? Jaguzzi anal. I... Uh, this show continues to shock and surprise, titillate and disgust. Um, no offense if you're a big animal person. Thumbs up. Uh, not up there, but thumbs up. Katie to Charlie's like, can you get off work and come to Vegas and like Havasu? And Sheena hears Katie asks Charlie and she's fuming. And Charlie's like, Havasu's like stepping into a different territory. Havasu's like white trash, way white trash. I do want to remind you Havasu is where Lala met the Dawn and they could not get their security deposit back because Lala got so excited from the dawn that she soaked the bedding, according to Lala. Sheena in a talking head is goes, is she seriously inviting Charlie right in front of me? It's just so fucking rude. But that's like Katie. And Charlie stands up and is like, well, I'm going to go do my job. Give me two seconds. And then when I get back, shots. And she just like, so I know there's a trip. I know I'm not invited. That's totally fine. I know we're not there, Katie. But I just hope moving forward, if we can just have nights like this, I can have a good time with you. And I just want to say, also Sheena's saying this, but it's like secretly she wants to be invited so badly in this moment. Katie's like, well, that's why I'm here. If I didn't think that was possible, I wouldn't be here. Well, if it ever gets to something more, awesome, Katie. But if it doesn't, I've accepted that as well. 
And Katie nods her head, yeah. And Katie in the talking head goes, if Sheena were to actually own what she's done and apologize for her words, well, first, I would like to die of shock, but, you know, I might be able to move forward, but that's not an apology. And Sheena's like, well, so cheers to being cordial. Where was I? That's right, anal. Um, also, by the way, if... if <laughs> Do you think Ariana's ever told Tom that she, you know, like, I love Tom was like, dude, sex with her is like vanilla, dude. You're telling me Anal was on the table? I don't even feel appropriate saying Anal, so I'm just going to say Anal. Anal was on the table, and this dude doesn't think she was adventurous enough? Anal? Do we ask, I'm now worried about, like, Anal, like, Anal was happening? And that wasn't good enough for Tom? I'm, I'm, I'm befuddled. I'm bewildered, and I truly, it's like, wow, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, then, by the way, there. Yeah, I don't want to blow it, but there, Dodie asks me what I wouldn't do for love at the end of her podcast, and my answer might surprise you, and it has a little something to do with Ariana. Now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, so moving on, the producers like. Lisa, did you ever suspect or think Sandoval and Raquel would become an item? No. However, now we know why Sandoval defended Raquel so much. It turns out he was in more than just a corner. Unlike Ariana, he was in her back door. We breeze over to Ariana and Sandoval's house in Valley Village. Ariana is in her bathrobe, in the in their bathrobe, in the kitchen. Uh, is giving Maya her dog treats, and this is after um, this is after guys' night. And remember, you know, her dog Charlotte, her you know, her best friend, you know, she had to put down, and and it was just that's heartbreaking. And this numb nuts goes to guys' night, and then literally talks to Raquel all night. Now, I believe a lot of people are thinking that this. Uh, the sex had happened the night before this, or that's what I'm seeing. But from Tom Santa, well, you can't really trust anything these doofuses say that supposedly it happened at see you next Tuesday, the next week. But regardless, whatever was happening started happening. I mean, I think it started happening before guys night, but it really kicked into gear because we see Jamie Lynn from Jamie all over the podcast. Jamie's amazing. He's been on here a bunch. I was on hers a couple of times. I highly recommend her podcast. If you want to see the full video of the video that they show of Tom and Raquel speaking at Saddle Ranch, I know it's over on her Patreon right now, I believe, and she's giving that money to a good cause. So if that is something to your liking, please, Jamie's great. Um, so it's, uh, this this is so infuriating. Santa was like, missed you last night, Ariana, but uh, technically it's supposed to be kind of guy's night. You son of a bitch. Gross. Dude. We flash over to the Montreon for guys night 15 hours earlier where Sandoval sees Raquel and Charlie walk in. He's like, what's up? How you doing, dude? And Sandoval now is back in the kitchen. He's like making a dumpling latte for Ariana and DJ James. Uh, Sandoval like DJ James Kennedy was not like super stoked that like Raquel showed up. I love how he keeps playing off for Kellen. Raquel plays off herself to Ariana of like, yeah, like DJ James Kennedy was jealous, but we know Raquel. She's amazing. No harm, no foul. Ariana goes, well, I thought they were, were like cool. And Sandoval was like, well, he said, he told me, I don't want to be like drinking around her. And Ariana's like, yeah, you can't like, truly relax and be yourself and then there's a knock at the door maya barks because she senses evil and um and you know raquel walks in the house you know all smiles carrying a vase full of pink ro ro roses but before that ariana's like why do people do that why do people knock why don't you know just walk in walk in and i'll tell you why ariana because vampires need to be invited into your house they need permission to come into your house um so, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Raquel's a vampire. Sandoval smiles. He's like, what the? By the way, like, I mean, this is the point where you're like, ooh, creepy. It's just, it's super intimate, this scene and how he's like, because you know they have this little secret already, this dirty little, ugh, over there, that side of the, it's very incestuous, very creepy. Um, and Charlie's with Raquel. They brought over Jersey Mike's for lunch. And Charlie's like, hey, baby girl, to Maya and Sandoval. They 
Raquel brought Ariana flowers. That's the appropriate thing to do when you steal somebody's boyfriend. And uh, Santa was like, you brought me flowers? Oh my God, I love it. What a dumbass joke. Ariana hugs Raquel. She's like, oh my God, these are so beautiful. And Charlie has a bottle of rosé wine. She's like, hey, I'm a little hungover. And Sandoval hugs her, then turns and hugs Raquel really tight. And she's giggling and laughing and just enjoying their little dirty secret. And Santa was like, it's been so long. Because <laughs> they just saw each other at guys night. And they also talked into the wee hours. They flash back to that scene of Tom and Raquel only at Saddle Ranch, only 10 hours earlier, sitting next to each other and just talking like all in each other's grill. Now, Jamie was on this podcast and I was on hers. And she told us that that night when she recorded that video, she was with Brett, the general manager of Schwartz and Sandy's. And they were doing these kind of silly voices. I have. She sent me that video of them doing silly voices. And they really thought they were just making fun of two like drunk guy, you know, two drunk friends. And they were doing voices like, what do you think? Well, I don't know. What do you think? And in reality, they were being super weird and creepy. Sandoval pulls away and kind of shakes Raquel and says, really excited and gruff, like, I barely recognize you anymore. <laughs> do you think she's clean at this point do you think she's washed off from last night anyways ariana laughs she's like wow you guys and said i was like i'll make you guys both dumpling lattes you can take these dumpling lattes and shove them where the sun don't sign yeah give two dumpling lattes for your two dumplings by the way does anybody think dumpling lattes are potentially just straight up coffee he's like uh yeah it's just coffee <laughs> there's actually not it's just like coffee it's instant coffee <laughs> um Ariana's like, oh, they're the best. Dumpling lattes. I'll grab mine. Hey, how are you guys doing? And Charlie's like, well, I'm sad that you weren't there. They flash back to three days earlier with Ariana in Vegas having to leave for uh, having to leave because of Charlotte. And this is where we get additional footage from Peacock. And Charlie's like, I'm sad for so many reasons because, like, I was so. And Ariana's like, well, number one is. I was so excited to like let it rip and everything, and then having to leave Vegas and having like the worst night like ever. Um, and just this whole thing is just so sad because at that same point to, I just keep thinking about what Tom was thinking of. Like, did he segment his personalities in a way where he was like, Oh, it's okay to do these weird things with Raquel because I need it. Even though my partner of nine years who I still say that I love and adore and love all of the good things that are happening for her in regards to Sandoval, that this is potentially so horrible at the worst moments in her life. Her dog dies and her grandma dies, two of the bad moments in your life. And he thought that was like green light, dude, green light, bone zone, bone zone. I don't know. It's like this, the thing that I keep trying to figure out of like, you couldn't have even just waited of like, I'm feeling weird things down there in the nether regions, but I also realize she's going through something completely insane. Maybe I just keep whacking off in the bathroom. Um, Charlie and I talking head says Charlotte, I feel like was my first friend in this friend group. Like I would literally go hang out with Charlotte in the corner. Cause I had no one else to hang out with, but the dog, they really used to treat Charlie like shit. I just can't really understand how Ariana's being so strong. Cause losing a dog, that's just like a gut wrenching thing. You know, I mean, that is the thing. Ariana is a strong damn person. And you guys like people, those little pe naysayers that are like, Oh, too much Ariana now too much. Like F off. Like, can we not look up to people that are actually strong that take what life has to offer them also deals with mental health issues and still keeps putting one foot in front of the other. And also Charlotte was a damn good dog. I met Charlotte a couple of times. The last time, unfortunately um, I had interviewed the, the, the Tom interview over at their place. And, you know, even back then she was not doing well. And uh, you know, it breaks my heart. And like, I'm here looking at my dog, you know, it's, just, it's so sad. Ariana's like, do you guys want to go over into the family room? And Charlie's like, do you care if we sit on the floor? Anyways, Raquel and Charlie take the pillows off the sofa. Charlie pulls out sandwiches to push pass out. And she's like, tuna mayo. They get a tuna mayo Jersey mic sub makes me queasy also uh shout out to my patreon group we did a live i told you about earlier and they literally got on like a tuna rant they just kept saying throwing tuna comments because of this they were really loving the tuna bit ha ha you guys you baddies ariana goes you guys have to fill me in from where i left and tom's like well <laughs> fun stuff happened uh let me explain last night <laughs> i uh, opened up the door a little bit more on totally cheating on you Raquel goes, after you left, we went to dinner at Vanderpump Paris. 
Oliver, our waiter, brings out these fancy drinks. Sandoval's like rolling his eyes, like, what's this guy got that I don't? I do fancy drinks all the time. You see that dumpling latte? Um, and Lala mentioned Oliver and had the cutest smile ever. He met up with us and we we're both having a very engaging conversation. And I turned to Lala and I'm like, wait, Lala, like, I think he's really cute too. And Sandoval has his hand on his chin and he's just watching Raquel like she's literally shitting gold out of her mouth. He's like, oh my God, this is so, she's just fucking amazing, dude. She could talk about Oliver and I just still think she's amazing. Like, it's so weird. Like, did the camera guy look at this? I'm like, what the fuck is Tom Sandoval on? It was weird. He was just like, dude, I've touched that booty, dude. Raquel continues. She's like, all I go is, you know what, Raquel? I'm not going to do anything with him. I'm going to give you the green light. Green light, green light. And I was like, okay. And Raquel's like, and next thing you know, we're making out on the dance floor. And I'm like, okay. And it was like, a little moment. And Ariana was like, well, good for you. I'm glad that you made out with someone. And Raquel's like, I made out with a lot of people this week. Yeah, thank you. And all of a sudden, it turns like into this whole, we really need to talk to Raquel. Like, I don't approve of your actions lately. And Sandoval's just listening intently, just staring at Raquel. And Lala goes, honestly, Raquel, I wouldn't feel comfortable having you around my man. And Ariana raises her eyebrow. Sandoval gives a little grunt like, ugh. And Raquel just a star. And she's like, and I said, well, it's good thing you don't have one. Ariana cringes, but Sandoval smiles. He's like, yeah, dude, that's my new dumpling. Yeah. Additional footage from Peacock. Ariana in a talking head goes, Raquel has been on the receiving end of Lala's incessant barking insults at her for so many years. And we get a flashback series, 2018. We have a brunette Lala going, you fucking twat, yo. And then in 2018, a lot lot pointing her finger going, I thought you were a fucking dummy before my dad died, you fucking Bambi eyed bitch. And in 2019, with Ariana looking on very sad, and Lala goes, You're a yapping chihuahua, yo. And Raquel's like, And you're a Rottweiler, we all know. And Lala goes, No, I'm a pit bull, bitch. I'm a Michael Vick fighting dog, which is a fucking horrible comment. It was horrible back then, it's horrible now. And Brittany goes, Brittany, Jax's wife is there. She goes, y'all scare me. You did crazy. You scare me. You scare me. Ariana continues in a talking head, goes, if Lala's hurt by that statement, then she really can dish it, but she cannot take it. Um, and Charlie in this scene goes, I think what happened was Lala's just embarrassed now. Her life didn't pan out the way she thought it would. And, and she fucked the wrong guy for the money and didn't get a house or anything out of it. This is additional footage from Peacock. And Santa was like, she fucked her way to how high and mighty she was and surely enjoyed all the perks from it. Santa and a talking head goes, I'm not really seeing how Lala can even try to convince herself that she had the ground to stand on. I mean, Lala has openly bragged about sucking a dick for a Range Rover. And then a flashback of Lala going, like Jack said to me the other day, yo, go suck a dick for a Range Rover. And I was like, I was sucking dick for more than just a Range Rover. <laughs> and then Sandoval continues in a talking head and enjoying all the perks with being with Randall. And he was still married to somebody else. I'm sure Randall's ex did not give Lala the green light. Another thing involving green light, green light, green. Sandoval loves green light as a, a word. He smiles. And, uh, Charlie goes, well, it was the first time that Raquel got to like say, fuck you, Lala, without, you know, having anyone say it for her. Like, of course you condone it. Or I, I don't know what that means. But, you know, it's interesting is that this is going to be Raquel's triumphant season where she really found her voice. And it turned out this way. Sandoval just keeps intensely staring at Raquel. Like, this is the kind of stare that you're like, uh, is this a Dateline episode? Why is that guy staring so hard? Charlie goes, it's okay. We took an L, Lala. She, you know, Lala took an L. We're going to keep going. You know, it's okay. You lost this one. And they all laugh. Um, uh, by the way, Juliana Croza didn't know what took an L was. It took L as a loss. 
Um, the kids say that. They say WL, these crazy kids. <laughs> Have you heard about Onel? <laughs> um, the producer now is like, hypothetically, um, Lisa, you were being cheated on and someone took you on a roller skating date to spend more time with you to put the effort into that relationship that he had already stepped out on. How pissed would you be? Because at this point, the next thing we're about to see, Tom is fully cheating. And Lisa's pondering it for a moment. She's like, oh, good question. Let me know. Well, I'd probably have his balls crystallized and wear them as little earrings. <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> I, I potentially would make it into a bottle and then try to stop you lean with it, nigga lane. I would have nigga lane. I would give the balls to nigga lane and it would make this beautiful steampunk clock that doesn't tell time and gives you nightmares. This is the beautiful designs of nigga lane. So now we're at this roller skating scene on Sunset. I didn't even know they had this. I like I live right by there, and uh, I didn't realize they had a skating, like an, a roller skating. I can't do it because of my knees. Uh, but Sam was like, here we go, dude. And I was like, this is so cute. And he's like, right. And this, he is like all hyped. Like, look what a good boyfriend I am seeing. It's really weird. It's sad too. Um, this is an additional footage from Peacock. They stop at the table to rent roller skates. The Ariana is a seven and a half and Santa is a 10. Guess what? Your boy is a 12, right? This guy, 12. Um, Santa Ball also says, I'm a 39-year-old boy, dude. Fact check, they say Tom is 40. By the way, I don't think that's true either. I believe Tom is 42 from my understanding, but they raise his age a year here. They get their skates on, and um, Santa Ball really wants these high white ones, you know, and they're like, well, you have some Hello Kitty ones. And Santa's like, I would love that. Thank you. Yes. Um, they get all skated up, and... They're very sweaty. It's the sun. And Sam was like, dude, you look very fucking hot today. And Ariana was like, thank you, Tom. He's like, no, like you look like you're sweating. And she's like, I am sweating. He's like, just kidding. Anyways, I fucked Raquel lately for a bunch of times. Ariana's giggling. She's like, I feel like we're going on a date. And I'm like, don't feel that way. Also, I want you to know, just for location wise, where that is, it's like less than one block from... um saddle ranch and it's across the street from where they were for guys night so it's all in the same little pocket ariana goes we haven't been on a date so long and so long and it's because he's been going on dates with other people santa was like it's been a minute dude you know if i feel like i'm always that short and thandy they're fucking raquel um and uh you know and santa is now sweating as well and Santa was like, uh, having fun, Dumplin'? And Ariana was like, well, last week was awful. And he's like, I know, dude. Well, in you. <laughs> it's so crazy. They get additional footage from Peacock. They flash back to nine days earlier. Ariana is crying, leaving Vegas to go home for Charlotte. They keep repeating these certain scenes, and they do this a lot during seasons of All Housewives show. And I just don't know why. It's like I'm... I, I have the ability within me to remember this scene. Like I understand. I don't need to be led down the primrose path. You know, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, maybe it's just me. <laughs> um, okay. Sandoval and I talking, it's like, this is like the perfect time for Ariana and I to like reconnect and have these moments together. What a good boyfriend, you guys. Without the distractions of something about her sandwich shop and Schwartz and Sandy and like me boning Raquel. Like, this is what we need. And Sandoval kisses her some more, like a lot. And um, Ariana, by the way, this is the around the time when he told Howie Mandel that he was trying to break up with her. Like, no, dude, like, Howie, you don't even understand, dude. So now they go skate. It's like this skateboarding thing. Tom does some cool moves, but he also falls. And Ariana says, and I'm talking it, I think Tom and I have the kind of bond, you know, what we started out as friends. And that friendship bond is something that I feel like will help us be able to come back and like rebuild those fun romantic times now that we hopefully have more time together. But I think that these sacrifices we're making, even though they're hard, they're worth it because I want him to succeed when it comes to opening the bar, but I also miss being able to just really be together. Wow. That sounds like a pretty good relationship. And I think that's the fallacy in relationships. It's not always going to be hot and heavy like it is in the first, you know, 
year or so is that you get into building a life together and building a life together is hard Building a life together, it's not for the faint of heart. And it does take a lot of personal sacrifice. And you do change along the way a lot. But that's the thing is that that's okay. That happens to so many people. But you want to be able to then tell your partner at the time that you can't do this anymore and not do what Tom did. It's a cautionary tale. Um, and so uh, they take a break, sit down on the bench. And Ariana's like, oh, my God, I'm so sweaty, anal. And she's like, oh, truly, my entire face is melted off. And Santa's like, you look so fucking hot today, dude. Like such a beautiful marrying up. I don't know. It's like, it's a lovely dance of hot and cute that you do. Dude, I, you know, creep azoid. Creep azoid. Ariana laughs. She's like, a lovely dance. Thank you. Are you cheating on me? Ariana goes, last night with the girls, I was like having a, I'm having a pool party on Friday. If you guys want to come and they're like, who's invited? And I was like, everyone. And they go, everyone. And she and Sandoval say together, everyone dude and ariana goes so then of course katie and raquel are not in a great spot right now and santa was like i think it's less about katie and raquel and more like i feel like more like maybe raquel and lala dude and ariana's like what's more raquel and lala but katie and lala are very much like you know in lockstep on it so i said to katie i was like you know you're gonna have to work really hard to get me to not just absolutely love Raquel. I love her so much and we spent so much time together on trips and we really have this like really beautiful friendship family and then like saying stuff like, well, I wouldn't trust Raquel around my man. And Sandoval actually looks towards her out of the corner of his eye, not turning his head. And you see like the Botox wrinkles start to like, just kind of like, dude, we don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> I don't want to protect your forehead anymore. You know, like, just like, oh, let me go. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. And uh, he raises his eyebrow. You know, that I, I think is another thing that breaks the Botox. And she's like, and I'm like, we've all stayed in houses together. We like, it sucks that maybe you guys don't have that kind of friendship family that we have had the last few years with each other. And Santa was like, dude, it's such a, it's such a transparent love that we have. Like, all of us, like from Jesse, Jesse Montana to like, you know, um, Raquel's vagina. <laughs> He's like, I'm cheating on Raquel. No. And I will say that is one of those things that I looked at them and I was like, wow, they do really have this good group of people and they all hang together all the time. And I was like, man, that, that makes me miss my group of friends that I used to hang out with. Like, I really, I, I mean, when we went to Coachella with them, they, they had this whole crew. And I was like, wow, what a cool crew. In fact, my one of my friends that I went to Coachella with, that are like, she's now part of their crew. I mean, the Ariana crew, not the Tom crew. Um, I don't know. I mean, they think Billy Lee and Kyle Chan are in that crew. You know, who knows? Um, but it is one of those things. And that's another thing that Ariana really, truly does appreciate her friends. So this is another thing that she didn't see coming because she, they really did take Raquel in. This whole cast did for the most part. I mean, Sheena did as well. Um, also, I imagine these are the kind of conversations before you start a commune, a commune and like sister wives, which, uh, you know, Raquel was like, I will ask if we can all be together. And he was like, no, dude, she's going to dip out. Sam was like, yeah, dude, like, there's not even a thought about it with our friends, dude. And Ariana's like, I wish that Lala and Katie could see that, but have fun together or don't, but everyone will be there at the pool party. And I'm excited for everyone to just, after tomorrow, I hope I never have to fucking hear about it again. And it sounds like, it's going to be great, dude. Just get it all out there. Wouldn't it be amazing if you got it all out there, Tom? Um, mm. Like each scene is just creepy. Now we go popping over to the Belmont. The Belmont is a big Vanderpump Rules hangout. It's on La Cienega Boulevard, right be before, like right before you hit Melrose. And these kids, these Vanderpumpers, have been hanging out there a long time. You know, uh, I've seen Tom Sandoval do plenty of night of karaoke there. I saw Ar Ariana, I believe, did her Alanis Morris set. I mean, like I've seen these guys. I'm trying to find this one video of Tom doing karaoke let's see what year this is it's uh i put it in my favorites to show you guys or let you i don't even know if the audio this is great when is this from um to the okay this is from september 30th 2019 this is tom sandoval you're not going to see the image you'll hear it this is tom sandoval doing karaoke at uh the belmont here we go <laughs> Can 
Keeps going. So that was Tom uh, doing the Billy Ocean classic Lover Boy. He can sometimes hit those high notes where he has trouble is in the lower register, which is usually the sweet spot for other artists. Um, now we are Schwartz is on a blind date, you guys, a hinge date. And this was hysterical for me. Schwartz is seated. He begins to talk to himself. Do you know Schwartz in scenes is very comfortable doing monologues to himself? Or even like that last scene when he fought with Katie around the... Uh, the propane tanks that they were trying to blow up sir with, you know, where Raquel was like, Katie, look at me. And she's like, why are you here? And then Katie walks off and George is like, I guess I'll just be out here. Like, you know, on my phone or something. Well, anyways, Schwartz is having his solo scene, the Belmont. And he's like, I'm nervous. I need drinks. Huh? Yeah. Schwartz in a tight night goes, it's been 12 years since I've been on a date with someone other than Katie. Huh? I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I have cheated. Those aren't dates, though. And I was very drunk. Um, <laughs> he's, he's, you know, his date arrives. And by the way, very uh, cute. Very. I mean, did she not seem like very young? Maybe that's just me as I get older. I'm like, you know, it's like she looked very effervescent and young. And I was like, because at first she just ordered water. Did you see that? And I was like, oh, my God. She's not 21. She can't order a drink at this bar. Um, but Schwartz is like, hey, Kendall, how are you doing? And Schwartz gets up and hugs her. And he's like very, you know, this guy, I'm telling you, Schwartz is so charming. Like I was reading comments today of girls who are like, oh, he's like my dream guy. This is my dream date. And I'm like, dude, he's just, he's, if he ever gets his at, true shit together, and he's never going to have a problem dating, but like, wouldn't it be amazing if he really stepped up to the challenge of figuring out what, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, Kendall's like, hi, I'm pretty good. How are you? And she was like 10 out of the 10 entrance, Kendall. And he claps. I don't even know why she just walked in. He's like, wow, you know how to walk. Oh, I'm getting all the cool girls. She was in a talking and goes, Kendall, I met on this dating app. Farmers only. No, it was Hinge. Flashback to four days earlier, the day at the food truck, the same day that they went to the, the sperm doctor where Schwartz and Sandoval, you know, and Schwartz also that day was Schwartz was like, I think Raquel's got her eye on someone else. And Sandoval's like, really, dude? Huh? Who do you think that is? And Schwartz admitted, you know, at the reunion that he, he was or admitted, admitted somewhere that he was talking about Sandoval. Uh, anyways, we flash back to that moment and Schwartz was like, oh, my God. I'm on hinge. How do I look at other girls? And Sandoval takes his phone. He's like, dude, you got one, dude. You got a match. She's like, only one match? He's like, dude, you just put it up, dude. Sandoval's like, dude, I only got three matches yesterday, and I've been in a nine-year relationship, dude. Schwartz continues in a talking head. He's like, we matched, dude, and we started chatting, and um, we decided to take it to the next level. We bought a house in Valley Village, yo. No, um, so, uh, sorry, I was just reading the text. I just got, I do want to point out something about this scene because I had heard about this date. So like I knew a little bit about what was going on. Like I was at that daily mail party and you know, the truth about Joe that his, you know, roommate that didn't really live there, lived there. I don't know if he considered that a girlfriend, but they were doing the hippity dippity there. You know, they were, I mean, I think Joe made a, thought it was way more serious than Schwartz ever did. But I also have a feeling that Schwartz lets people think whatever they want and never kind of clearly sets any kind of boundaries potentially. And, and I, by the way, I've done that in the past myself. Um, and uh, that's not good. It's not good. And you see in things like this, where I, I, I think, I think he potentially didn't really, you know, he just let things happen around him, which can be dangerous, but I had always heard this scene but you can't trust what Schwartz says to other people. But I had heard he had told somebody that the production had set this up, you know, that this was set up through production. Who knows what to believe? Who knows if he was telling Joe this just to tell Joe, like, I got to, it's work. They set it up because Joe didn't want to film. So who knows? Um, maybe I'll ask Dodie that next week. 
Um, so a server comes to take their order and Kendall's like, I'll have a water. And George's like, can I have a shot of Patron tequila and a light beer, please? And she's like, oh, I'm going hard. Sorry, Kendall. I'm a functioning alcoholic. And Kendall's like, oh, I guess I'll do the same. That's a real big step up from water. She's like, can I get a Corona? I don't know why I agreed to do that. I don't either, Kendall. It's weird. Schwartz is like, we don't have to get drunk. Thanks again for coming and chilling with me on a date. And like, I guess it's cute, but it's also like, if I did shit like this, I would be fucked. Like, they'd be like creep of the month. Oh my God. Like if I did this, like, Hey, um, thanks for coming on this date. The girl would run out of there. It'd be like great accent Kindle. But if Schwartz does, he's like, thanks for coming on this date. Uh, once again, I'm even doing it creepy on the imitation, but he can pull it off. And Schwartz is like, I say it like that. Cause I never met anyone online. It's scary. Oh, man. And Kendall's like, it is weird. And Schwartz is like, do you do this on a regular basis? And she's like, no. He's like, it's your first date ever, too? And she goes, no, it's not my first. I'll say I'm already warmed up. And he's like, oh, oh amazing. And Schwartz in a talking goes, in any sort of neuroses I had about going on a date dissipated when she walked in. She got like this instantly likable aura, which is like really nice when you're going on a date especially coming out of, you know, and they flash back to 2016, the classic scene where they've been arguing and Katie's going into a building while Schwartz walks into a car and Katie's like, you're so rude. Don't talk about how your dick. Yeah. Don't talk about how your dick doesn't work either. And he's like, what? <laughs> My dick works great. Like once again, Tom talking to himself, Schwartz continues in a talking head, a marriage, additional footage from Peacock. Schwartz is like, do you want to get some food? Anyways, they get tater tots, you know, spoiler alert. And um, Schwartz is like, oh, my God, I'm on a date. I'm on a date. He shouts it out like he's like fucking like, you know, Leo DiCaprio on the Titanic. A random girl gives him a thumbs up. I would love if you just saw me in the background, just thumbs down, just staring. Or like you can see Joe in the background. Just like, why aren't you home in our apartment yet? Schwartz is like, wait. What part of LA do you live in? And she's like, well, I live on the West side in Brentwood. He's like, Oh my God, you may as well live in fucking Minnesota. And Kendall's like, where do you live? And she's like, he's like, I live in the Valley. She's like, okay, cool. What are you excited about this next year? And he's like, Oh wow. Um, no sob stories, but I do want you to feel bad for me. I got divorced a while ago and I'm like slowly getting my life back together. Wait, huh? can I present you a hypothetical situation? And I'm like, oh shit, is he really? And Kendall's like, strictly hypothetical. Okay, yeah. George is like, this has nothing to do with me, okay? There's this guy, his name is John. He likes to put his fingers in his mouth and he goes to one of his good dear friend's weddings in Mexico. And for the sake of argument, let's call her Bina. And um, he's been divorced for like seven months and he was, her name is Mady. And sometimes if she drank, we would call her Mamila Mady. And um, he happens to make out with this girl and his ex-wife decided to defriend him because of that. Which, by the way, having him even explain it in a hypothetical situation, you're just like, oh my God, you're so dumb. Like, that's, God, you're so wrong all over again. Like, it's so easy. It's so simple. Yeah, like, of course. Are you kidding me? By the way, they show the scene of like the, the whole weird kissing scene where at that point, that day she had already boned Sandoval and boned Sandoval the night before. And then she's like, kid, like Eskimo brothers. Is that even a thing? And Schwartz is like, this guy uh, hypothetically didn't do it out of spite or like, you know, any sense of, so was he wrong? And this is additional footage from Peacock. We see Kendall turning on her car and leaving. No, Kendall's like, well, people are allowed to, have the feelings that they feel and John's allowed to have the feelings that John feels. Kindle is a champ because, you know, I, you know, these hypothetical situations are always given to strangers that don't know any of the parties involved. So of course they're like, yeah, I mean, I, I, th I think that all sounds, you know, fine and everybody's good. And he's like, Oh, thank you. Oh my God. Oh, I got to call matey, matey. Hey, Mamila Mady, I'm I'm on a date. Um, and she thinks John 
should be allowed to kiss at Bina's wedding, dog. <laughs> John got divorced. He didn't divorce, and it shouldn't be fair that person would put arbitrary restrictions on what John can or can't do. What What do you think about John? And she's like, um, it's like I I think that John's human. Well, what if I told you John is a cyborg sent from the year. 3010 to save humanity. What would you think of that, Kendall? Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, Ro I know, isn't it <laughs> so stupid? I want Schwartz to do hypotheticals for everything. I'm like, Kendall, it's me, Schwartz. Anyway, I've got a new one for you. Um, okay, remember John? Okay, so yeah, John goes to that wedding, friend wedding, and then he kisses this friend, and like then. The friend, though, that he's kissing is actually fucking John's best friend that he has a bar called John and John's with. And but that guy's fucking that girl that John is kissing. But also that guy, John, John, too, he's also in a nine year relationship, dude. And then hypothetically, I said they're boning. And then uh, John goes to Mars on Fox. What? <laughs> <laughs> so Schwartz and Italian goes, okay, I can admit I'm John. Oh, you know, Kendall strikes me as someone who has a strong moral compass. So I'm never going to see her again. <laughs> so it's kind of validating to hear Kendall say that she agrees with John. Yeah. Update your LinkedIn doofus. Kendall goes, well, I'm sure John would love to hear my opinion. And Schwartz is like, apparently he's really good on a first date. Anywho, oh, I forgot my wallet. Can you pay? <laughs> Schwartz continues in a talking head. I'm not a douchebag. <laughs> not a complete douchebag. Wink. Schwartz is like, well, wait, this was fun. And Kendall's like, yeah, I think it's supposed to be. And Schwartz is like, Kendall, this is what people do? He's nervous, covering his hands on his mouth. And Schwartz is like, they meet online and they go and hang out and they laugh. And Kendall's like, yeah, hopefully laugh. I think that's the goal. And Schwartz is like, can I have a hand job? No, he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. And Kendall's like, I'm glad you're having fun. I am too. Should we go try to have a different drink somewhere else? And he's like, okay. And Kendall's like, okay, let's do it. And Schwartz is like, my God. And Schwartz and Italian goes, I think it was a success. I had a great time. We laughed. She's super charming. We had a connection. Um, yeah, but then like, why, why, you know, she did seem cool, really young, but cool. Why, why didn't they like already better than Raquel? Like, yeah, what happened to this girl? That's why I think it was fake. But, um, and also I think he was with Joe at this time as well. Schwartz is like, you know, it'll always be my first date after my divorce. That's just not true. That's just not true. Top line. Anyways. Now a song plays anything else but cry. Lisa's like, I wasn't suspicious that something was going on with Tom and Raquel. I kind of put it to bed. But the others that were in the group, they were suspicious. Um, and Lala, Katie, and Christina Kelly are entering Sir. And Christina's like, dinner's on me tonight, guys. Remember Christina Kelly? I believe she was a manager at Sir, and I know she worked there for a long time. And Lala goes, is it really? And Christina's like, hi, see you next Tuesday. And they bump into DJ James Kennedy. He's like, what are you guys doing here? And Christina's like, we're having a little dinner. And Kennedy's like, you have a businesswoman special tonight? And James's like, we can figure out something out. And it's like, James, you don't even fucking see people. You're a DJ. You don't even figure anything out. And Lala goes, bye, Jameson. Bye. Good to see you. Enjoy. Guys night. And they, the ladies get seated. And Christina's like, I'm loving your long hair. And Lala goes, I know, right? And Christina's like, mermaid. And Lala goes, yeah, mermaid. And little Lala goes, look at my pussy hair. <laughs> oh, my God. A server arrives to take their order. And Christina's like, are you going to have a little cocktail? Do you see what she did there? Cocktail. Cock, um, like a cock a doodle doo, you know, and no cock like a, like a big dick. And Lala goes, she's gonna have a stiff cock. These women and their jokes, <laughs> deaf comedy jam. Much what? They order the usual: the goat cheese balls, the shishitos, the street corn, the mashed potatoes. Is there any kind of cohesive menu at Sir? You're like street corn. Wait, you go what? Um, 
Lala goes, let's just take out, let's just, yeah. Anyways, Lisa arrives. Like, Hi. And Lala goes, hey, Lisa, you want to sit down for a sec? No, I'll sit on the floor. Don't worry. <laughs> Little Lisa, Van you just got Vanderpumped. <laughs> of course, I'll sit down, dear girl. Christina's like, well, you can sit on my lap, Lisa. <laughs> Christina, what a all dirty is like cocktail and sit on my lap. What's going on? Lisa's like, I'll have a glass of um. And I love that she thinks about this. Like, what could what's possibly could wet my whistle? Oh, Vanderpump Chardonnay, of course. Do you think ever Lisa gets tired of drinking her own swills? She's like, God, please, when I say Vanderpump something, you just give me the highest, the most expensive Chardonnay ever, and just you know, tell people it's Vanderpump Chardonnay. I was like, Oh, I did say yes, yeah, so thank you to Nicholas. But when I came in, he wanted me to try the fries because fries get del delivered. I couldn't go through everything with this menu. It's nearly impossible unless you're creating the menu. And that takes weeks or years in some people's cases. They, he's making a joke about Schwartz and Sandy's and all of the tastings, the menus. And we see a whole montage of that. And La La La, she's like, you're a savage, girl. And Lisa's like, listen. <laughs> It would be um, thoroughly inappropriate for me to indulge in this kind of conversation if any of you worked for me, but seeing that you don't. And Christina's like, it's just, you know, four girls having dinner. And Katie's like, except for maybe Ken, who can walk through the kitchen and spill some tea on Raquel and Tom Sandoval. You guys, are you ready? Let's do it. Here we go. Flashback time. Ken Todd, we're at Villa Rosa. Let me set the scene. We're in a kitchen. We're doing Katie's like with another lady and Lisa. And she's like putting sandwiches together. We see all the sandwich fixings. And Ken Todd, uh, uh, you're just like, I've got to get to the kitchen. Must deliver message. Need to deliver message. Uh, step. Step. And do it for Jiggy, Ken. Come on. Let's go. I can't believe that Tom Sandoval and Raquel over when Ariana's away. I know, Lisa says. And Ken's like, in the jacuzzi as well. <laughs> My kid is even getting crazier because Lisa's like, I know. And he's like, come on, Ken, give more information. You've got to tell them about the jacuzzi. In the jacuzzi as well. I know. And Katie's like, what? And Ken's like, and she stayed all night, yeah? I know. Oh, you delivered the information. Time to go back to the bedroom. <laughs> Ken Todd, honestly, that truly was a magical scene. And the pep he delivered, like, you know, the, I do it like, did you know? But he was like, did you know? His eyes are like, oh, did you know that Tom Sanzo was a juicy girl? Oh. <laughs> By the way, where Peacock, fuck you. Where's the additional footage for that? Wouldn't it be amazing? It's like, no, oh, what are you guys doing in here? I guess that was just. Could I have a bite of a sandwich? No, Ken, you can't have any of these delicious savvies. I heard Raquel run over a tuna and mail sub from Jersey Mike's. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> I knew she was a fucking nut job when she brought over Jersey Mike's. That's fucking insane. Katie goes, sorry, Lisa goes, I don't know. I don't know. For me, having this gorgeous woman sitting in a jacuzzi when I was away, it's like a guy's a guy, right? You got to feel something in the old cock and balls area, right? I love she's like, you've got Miss Malibu in there. Like, I'm sorry. I think Raquel is pretty, but I don't think there's anything fucking hot about her. I'm sorry. And I'll tell you what, the cheating makes it even worse. I'm like, wow, not hot and devious. Like this across, like I know maybe you girls think different. I don't know. I just don't see it. Who knows? What's wrong with me? And Katie is like, 
I'm like, Ariana, how do you, how do you not care? This girl, like she drinks and like acts like in a way they're talking about Raquel. And then she does it again. And Ariana's like, well, she's my friend. And she's like Tom's friend too. And I think she might be closer to Tom. And Lala goes, did I tell you what's weird, Lisa? On the day Ariana's grandmother dies, Tom Sandoval's with Raquel all day. And then they flash Sheena's vlog footage of them partying at that, um, what was it, the Labor Day party or something? And they were full on bone zoning by that time. Even Jax was at that party and saw it. Lala continues. Ariana was calling Tom furious and he's like, okay, dude, I'll come home right now. And he didn't leave for another two hours. It's strange. Lala and a talking head's like, something's going on with Sandoval and Raquel. And then little Lala's like, dude, if I fucking get my, if I get my lips on them, dude, fuck that. Lisa's like, did you tell her that she wasn't chill that day? And Lala goes, she was not chill. Like, Lisa, what? Did you tell her that she was not vibing uh, up top, down low, too slow? <laughs> Lala continues in a talking head. I thought Sandoval was taking a break from drinking and what, so he could have healthy sperm to fertilize Ariana's eggs. We get a flashback to Ariana telling Sandoval not to drink or smoke for five days to donate the sperm because that guy had some weak sperm. And Lala still in the talking heads like, but at this Labor Day barbecue, I didn't see him leave the bar. This guy was pounding drinks. Lala goes, anytime you get that close with someone and then you're drinking, things happen yo a new scene brings sheena and raquel to maker's mess a craft shop sheena's like this is a cute little area and we see yarn inside the store and many disco balls uh i was waiting to see some like like yarn like light light lightning bolts or something and she's like oh my god i see rainbows and the store staff welcomes them and you know hey we got a resin jewelry workshop and you know raquel's like i just spent 700 dollars on a lightning bolt necklace <laughs> and sheena's like i'm not a crafty person whatsoever uh raquel is oh she's crafty she gets around she's crafty she's always down she's crafty in the jacuzzi she's crafty on a mustache ride she's crafty taking sure she's crafty hooking up with santa ball she's crafty telling peter no thanks she's crafty dj james kennedy's flame crafty Rochella, 2023 yo um, store staff's like, you guys, um, you, you don't have to have skills really. This works for everybody. You're going to make a necklace and earrings. And she's like, I'll get started. Thank you. And Raquel's like, huh, such cute stuff in here. And she's like, okay, so tell me what happened yesterday. Why you were so late to work. And Raquel's like, oh gosh, um, I'm so embarrassed. Well, um, you can just see, she's like, huh? Okay. Do it like we practiced. Okay. The Toms and I carpooled together because we care about the environment. We're climate activists. And when we got back, I was like, huh, what a balmy night we're having. Let's go in the jacuzzi. And I was, oh yeah, already wearing my bathing suit. And, um, ha, uh, we hop in. Okay. Yeah. And the and we're drinking a little bit. And then I went into the little social media room downstairs and um, I passed out. Uh, uh, did you buy that? And oh, no, Sandoval was like, why don't you go upstairs out of the social media room? Because I need that for social media. Uh, I've seen this room, the social media room. <laughs> so that's what i did after the jacuzzi and a little drinking in no way was there a penis that went anywhere near me or my goodies huh? oh she makes an o face and we're a talking ad she's shaking her head she's like i didn't put a move on schwartz huh? that much is true nothing of the sort happened and then she throws in and Nothing happened between Sandoval and I either. We had a fun night as friends. I was in their social media room and then I overslept. And she rolls her eyes. It's so fucking weird, man. So dark. 
because they now it's fully admitted in the last five minutes of the reunion that they did have sex that night. She's like, it's not a good look <laughs> when we raw dog, when I get raw dog, when there's a funeral. Ah, Sanibal. I know Sanibal's the worst, but I'm sorry. Raquel plays a part as well. And Sheena goes, so Brock played basketball with the guys yesterday and they both said that you didn't stay over, girl. Flashback to basketball and the guys are resting on the ground. And uh, Brock's like, hey, that's a good game of basketball. Yo. Yeah, you guys made an after party. Did Raquel stay? Huh? No, did she want it? She went home. All right. Santa was like, yes, dude. Yeah, she went home, dude. She dipped. And Schwartz is like, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I did like we had a we had a little slumber party, you know. And the two toms look at each other. I'm sorry, dude. Schwartz knew way earlier too. Anyways, Brock's like, yeah. So Raquel didn't sleep over, huh? huh? And Santa was like, no, dude. And back to this scene, Raquel's like, I guess I should have said that I didn't stay over. And she's like, no, I think that they shouldn't have lied because it's just like something's going on that isn't. Like, why are they lying? Like, what really happened? And Raquel's like, uh, yeah. True liars, and she goes. I just think that's weird that everyone's trying to make it that you, our friend, are going to secretly gonna do something with one of our guys. Like when we're not there, it's just so like, oh my god, I would trust you in bed with Brock. <laughs> what? And because like, it's not that we're just friends. And Sheena's like, I know, you've already said that. We all know that, silly. Additional footage from Peacock. Sheena talking to her goes, when you put it in terms of a single girl slept at a guy's house when his girlfriend was out of town, sure, that sounds a little shady. And then back in the scene, Raquel's like, you know, like to paint the picture that I'm some like home wrecking whore is just a little bit far-fetched. And Sheena's like, uh-huh. And Sheena's like, okay, what? Sheena continues in a talking head. But also, it's Raquel, our little puppy dog who just needs guidance in the world. So I thought nothing of it. Nothing at all. Because again, I was in too deep. Sheena also got lost in the sauce, you guys. And um, they really did not see this coming. But also, how weird that Raquel is even like going so far to lie and throw things in that are believable. Of Like, they think I'm a home wrecking whore. Like, there is layers of chess being played here. I mean, of course, it's also probably just connect four with these doofuses but there are layers of thought going into this for her to say that line that really takes some thought i don't know if that i don't know if sandoval coached her or that but that's that's like some devious deviousness um that's the end of that additional scene we flash back to the big reveal moment with raquel crying in the talking head of like the reason don wanted to lie about it because it's a really bad look to hook up with someone it's just a bad look all around I mean, if you even if you didn't do it in their house, but being in the house, like that's fucking dirt bag, dirt bag central, man. She's like, ah, uh, to hook up with someone's boyfriend in their own house when they've gone out of town, especially for like a funeral of all things. Um, back in this scene, she was like, I was the OG home wrecking whore of this group, and Raquel's like, oh wow, and Raquel's singing like, it turned out pretty good for you. Do you wait? Should Raquel do a single? Oh my God, because Raquel could follow you like, you're a home wrecking whore. And then you did good as gold. Huh? Interesting. I made it through the wilderness. I made it through trying to find out who Raquel was. I didn't know. I met Tom. And then Tom, I'm at DJ James Kennedy. I tried every guy, even all over in Vegas. And I knew that I Look good in blue. Because she's wearing the blue dress from the talking head. And she's like, yeah, I'm finding my way now. I'm making it through. Finding what the voice is. It's not all shaky. Anywho. 
It's getting tougher as I get tougher. It's getting rougher in season 11. I'm going to kick some ass. I'm out of mental health rehab. And I'm going to come back as Raquel. Who can you smell a rock? Rock is cooking. Gonna take everybody's boyfriends and maybe some girlfriends too. I found my voice, not a choice. I'm a star. I don't need your shitty boss, cause I'm a star. I don't need no fucking worm with a mustache. I'm Rock Kill. Kiss me for the 39th time. I'm gonna kiss everybody I see. That's Rocky Guillermo. Come on, make out with me like a Raquel. Who, who, like a Raquel. Oh, feeling, just feeling so fine. Uh, when you go down on me and you kiss on me and you make out with me and you love us play. When the grandma died, ho, 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 I didn't make out with Schwartz, just so you know, oh, 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 yeah, ch -ch -ch -ch. I hope I don't have to pay for the rights to that song. Anyways, Sheena's like, then game Lala, and now here you are, I'm passing the throne, and Raquel's like, ha, 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 ha. Uh, By the way, Brandy Glanville saw this the other night, and she lost it. She was, I think, drinking. It's like, OG homewrecking horror. How dare you? I'm just so through with all of this. Brandy, still, I mean, I just feel for Brandy Glanville so bad because it just seems like she feels like she's owed something and she just doesn't seem to handle things very well. And it is weird because there's not a, like a really direct career path when you do the things that reality stars do and i feel as you get older it's not an industry that pushes you out but you know she did get pushed out of ultimate girls trip because of caroline manzo because of her own behavior and she's like well listen i was encouraged to do that behavior so it's like a really slippery slope but you just sense when she's like right tweeting you're like dude put down the drink come on like just let things happen additional footage from peacock because like i'm so excited for glamping and then Sheena's like, okay, who's all coming? She's like, you and Brock, Tom and Ariana, Schwartz. And Sheena's like, so it's like a couple's thing? And Raquel, who does a delayed snort, she's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a tent with two beds in it. So if that's the case, then Schwartz and I would like, it would be a roommate situation because I'm fucking Sandoval. And Sheena's like, and these girls are going to have a field day when they find out all of us couples and you and Schwartz are going glamping. And Raquel's like, whatever. She's like, it's your birthday. You invite whoever you want to invite and we will all have fun together. And Raquel's like, yeah. Back at Sir, Lisa's like, Ariana and I have always connected about our love of horseback riding. We get a flashback to, uh, listen, guys. Do you want me to do this scene? Because I feel like this is one of those, like, so, I'm like, oh. And some people were like, oh, it was nice to hear Lisa talk about her broken leg and the horse accident, which is very serious. That was very real life. But, it, like, I felt like it stopped this fucking show like a heart attack. I was like, okay. I need to share my story. It's like the story isn't nearly about you. It wasn't like we had teases of the horse story all season. Like, this came out of left field. I'm like, we're, we're on the horse field? Like, what are, what are we doing? What? Horse girls? Anyways, Lisa's like, I sustained an injury that was kind of devastating. And we see Lisa in a photo with her foot in a brace and riding a red motorized scooter with her dog in the basket. I'll get you, my pretty. And she's like, I don't think I really wanted to ever ride again. And then Ariana was the one that really encouraged me to get back in the saddle. She also encouraged me to take it in the back door for kin. Did you know Ariana uh, encouraged Lisa to let me have animal sex? Um, they take us to the paddock where Lisa keeps her horse. Hey, buddy. Yeah, good girl. Um, Lisa's like, have you been here long, Ariana? She's like, no, five minutes. And they show us the horse Tandon. And the sign on the, the stall says, HRH, Prince Tarden. Sorry, Tarden. Loved by Lisa Vanderpump. It says loved by, not owned, loved by Lisa Vanderpump. Mm -hmm. 
Lisa is talking to the horse, you know, it's like, oh, obviously you've got hay in there, like a man with a television. Ha 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 ha. And Lisa's feeding, like, take these carrots, these abandoned pump carrots. Nigga Lane made these carrots. Ariana is like, um, you know, just loose carrots in your bag. You just rock around with carrots all the time. And Tarden is a pretty white gelding, which is a neutered horse. People generally don't ride stallions too feisty. And yes, that is a note from Juliana Carosa. I didn't know what a gelding was. Um, you know, and it, the mane is braided beautifully, turns around, accepts the carrot, um, and then uh, and then asks for a spinoff series. And so that is coming up. Tartan's Adventures coming to Peacock. Uh, Lisa's like, hey, Tartan, come on. And Ariana's like, he loves you. I know he does. He probably feels bad for the accident. Uh, shall I tell her what happened, Tartan? Well, let's go over here, shall we? He's eating his carrots anyway. Let's sit, let's sit, let's sit. I came to ride him, and as soon as I got on him, he felt frisky. He felt like kin after two G and T's, you know, so I, I kind of put him into a canter and suddenly something changed in him. He like put his head down, he bucked, he reared and I stayed on through that and then he tripped and I went over the top quickly like bang, I heard my leg break and then he jumped over me and right then and there I saw Raquel, Raquel was right there pushing him on, making him fuck me. No, Lisa Natagana goes, I laid there on the floor and I knew straight away that I'd broken my leg. And my leg, I say, it was broken in four places, but it was actually broken in four places and shattered. Unlucky. Going over a horse at a gallop is something that can often end in tragedy. And Lisa Dariana's like, and that was 20 weeks ago, and now I don't know what to do. And they show us Tarden with his head out of the stall. Tarden's like, come on, Lisa, ride me again, boy. Ride me again. Lisa's like, I feel like such a failure. And Ariana's like, no, oh my gosh, don't feel like that. And Lisa's getting emotional. I do. I do because I'm always, I'm, a, I'm the person that always gets back on the horse. That's me encouraging everyone and here i am i'm strong when it comes to life but this is like can i risk it again lisa natagna goes i actually haven't been riding since the injury and i also feel like a bit of a coward not just jumping back on that horse and riding bareback around the ring you don't gotta ride bare put a fucking saddle on like no wonder you're getting injured like i'm just gonna grab that mane and just bucking bronco just my nude lisa vanderpump body and i'll be like nigga lane look at me i'm riding todd and again i uh, just grabbed his mane bareback nigga lane nigga lane <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm just going all out right now, man. This is the last banner pump of the season, so I'm going to get nuts. Um, Lisa and Ariana are walking around the riding ring, and Ariana's like, do you hear that I enjoy anal? No, she's like, Lisa was like, it was right there. Lisa continues in a talking head. I've ridden many things in life. Huh, not all that I'm proud of, which I don't know. Uh, maybe check Reddit, but is this an admission of sleeping with Tom Sandoval? No, she goes, but I've never been thrown off before. That's for sure. <laughs> Sexy jokes. <laughs> Ariana is like, do you want me to go stand there and do something stupid to make a new memory for the spot? And Lisa's like, yes, make it memorable. And Ariana's like, where is it? Like, it was about there. Yeah. And Ariana's like, I'm just, uh, do, do a cartwheel. And then Ariana takes takes her pants down and she shits right at that, that actual spot. And it's such a powerful scene. This is probably going to get him the Emmy. No, it's like a car wheel. And it's like, oh, you know, like, oh, I can ride again. Oh, you've cured me. Oh, amazing. And Arya's like, I'll twerk on it. And she does. And, you know, Arya's like, I'll flip it off. It's, it's cute. It's cute. It really, for me though, stopped the momentum of like, let's get back to this cheating bastard. And this girl that is a weirdo robot, Raquel. Um, so Lisa and I talking to is like, when we picked up the cameras, you know, when we uh, scan, I tried to capture this huge fallout that had happened. You know, I need, I said, Hey, listen, Bravo, we need to capture this because of Tom and Raquel's affair. There was just so much going on, you know, maybe a lot of people would have just let it die, but 
Vanderpump rules isn't like that. She literally says this. She's like, Vanderpump rules is not how we do it in Vanderpump rules. We're in the trenches, a lesser show, um, say, I don't know, uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills with that dildo Kyle Richards, you know, they would fucking call it a day. But here at Vanderpump Rules, we're here for the truth. We're here for justice. We're here for the American way. It's how we've always done it and how we'll continue to do it. Um, she's like, it's like we tell the true story and this was a very important component of what was component of what was going on in these people's lives. And it was our responsibility to tell it, to tell it. Did you know <laughs> Did you know we have the responsibility to tell the truth to the people? It's not how we do it with the rules. We catch up to DJ James Kennedy and Allie over a miracle mile where they live outside for a walk. It's March 9th, 2023. Post scandal, additional footage from Peacock. This was actually in the trailer for the uh, season finale. It just didn't make it. And James is like, he's like in this like kind of fall wear. He's like, I've got my lumberjack jacket on. He's like, don't you love where we live, Ali? And Ali's like, well, I'm kind of over it. I've been saying goodbye to it the last month. Like, I'll be like, I'm so grateful you for you, but goodbye. And James is like, I know, I'm excited too. James in a talking head's like, I've been renting apartments in Los Angeles like literally for 12, 13 years. That's not true, actually. Remember when D. James Kennedy lived with that strange older man? And like, <laughs> what was his name? It was like, this is my friend John. He's a very hip, cool dude. We're the same age. And John would be like, hey, bud, can we hang out tonight? Like, <laughs> Remember that? Like, I don't think he paid for that apartment. Anyways, and finally, DJ James Kennedy has bought a house. And they show a few pics of the house in the interior. It looks cool, man. It has a pool in the back. Some people were shitting on the house because it was, like, before they did it. But, like, fuck that. Like, it looks like a nice house. They really did it up nice. And it's not, like, it's, an ex it's like, over a million dollars. And it's also going to appreciate it in value. And it's not, like, the situation that Sandoval or any of these other numbnuts have gotten into. It's a really good starter home. Why am I even like, I'm like, it's a really good starter home, TJ James. Kennedy. I don't own anything, you guys. And finally, I bought a house, but I've got to say, I've done it smart. I don't want to end up like Tom Sandoval, that poo poo head. I don't want to end up like Schwartz. I don't want to end up like any of them. I want to end up like Guillermo. You know what I mean? <laughs> they flash a pic of Lisa's restauranter partner. He's a very good looking guy, G Guillermo. He's like, you know, I'm Kim Todd up in this bitch, you know? Like, I'll be like, hey, do you know Tom Sandoval was in the jacuzzi with Raquel? I can't believe that. He stayed a night, you know? What's up? What's up? Um, I like his, I'm Kim Todd. Remember when Kim Todd got mad at DJ James Kennedy? He's like, I'll knock your spot clean out. Remember when he was drunk? He was like, Lisa, why'd you fire me? And he's like, Get around, get away, punk. Get away. I'll knock your spot clean out. DJ James Kennedy's like, so what do you think of all these? And she's like, lies. And James is like, bullshit apologies. First, there's Tom's where he didn't even mention Ariana, but then Raquel posted her one, and it was very strange to say no, she's not the victim, but she's definitely playing the victim. I can tell a thousand percent Raquel did not write that herself in her own words. I'm not even trying to be mean here. It's like, it's like that she has the brain capacity for that, but she doesn't. I'll tell you that much. You know, I'm like, I'm not trying to be mean here, but she's adult. Um, she doesn't even talk like that, you know, and we do know these apologies uh, where it's like she's trying to play the victim, but then at the same time says she's not a victim, but then says she is a victim. It was a very confusing apology that did not seem in Raquel's voice. Allie's like, well, they're definitely together. And James is like, oh, I know. Honestly, I don't even care. You know, they can have each other. I have Allie. Oh, you in front of me. Equine, beautiful, porcelain skin. I love you, Allie. I love, love, love you. Remember when we used to kiss and eat salad off each other's lips? Well, anyways, they deserve each other. And they arrive at this indoor-outdoor bar eatery that's on... Um, La Brea, La Brea and Wilshire area. And it's really cute. It's like, uh, it's like, what is it? Like Firestone or something. It looks like a tire thing from the outside, like a tire place, but it's a really cute bar with ski ball. I really liked it actually. Um, James like, I'm going to go do the prickly pear beer. 
And James is like, two, please. They take their beers and sit. And James is like, let's try our beers at the same time. And Alex is like, okay, cheers. And they're like, yum. He's like, it's a good one, this beer. Yeah. Alex is like, that's really good. And they're like, when we first moved in, we were here like every weekend. And Alex is like, I know. I was telling Lala that I was like, you know, at the beginning of our relationship, we drank like so much. We were just going out and hanging out with friends and having fun. But now it's different, which is so confusing because like they were drinking all the time and drinking seems to really activate he did james kennedy so i'm curious about that was he just not going to an extreme like how is he able to control it around ali in these situations to not scare her completely um i'm really curious about that for real um so uh james is like i've been in this bubble for 15 years and ali goes i'm excited for you honestly i think it would be really nice for you to get out of the bubble and it was like honestly Fuck Raquel. The most traumatic thing in that whole circle is Graham Cracker's life now. You know, I guess Sandoval is going to have to be Graham's daddy now. Poor fucking Graham, dude. Sarah McLaughlin needs to like really come out of some sort of retirement. She's like, for just $5 a day, you can save Graham Cracker. And you're like, in the arms of the angel. Na, na, na. Poor Graham got a puncture wound on his neck earlier this season on Vanderpump Rules. It was told to us by Raquel that he was trying to escape his kennel. We'll never know the truth. In the arms of an angel. Na, na, na. Anyways, they show us a picture of James and Graham cuddling. And Allie goes, he literally doesn't give a fuck about you. He hasn't even talked to you. At first, I thought Allie was talking about Graham. And I was like... Ali, dogs can't talk. And then I realized it was Sandoval. He's like, he's been a fake friend. And James is like, and I still don't believe it. Not Sandoval. Like, Judas. He says, he goes, Judas. Stab me in the back. I'm Noah. And he came to sink the ark. Man, that's not at all the Noah and the ark. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Can we do that? Can we rewrite the Bible with Vanderpump? Like fables of like, Sandoval's Ark. And Sandoval's like, dude, I want to take two hot girls of every thought onto this fucking ark. And then I want to make love to him like, like a rock star, dude, because I got my mojo back, dude. Ali's like, I don't think that's right. And Jim's like, you get what I'm saying, you know, though. It's betrayal. It's betrayal, Ali. And Ali goes, it might be. I don't know. James in a talking head. He's really amped up in this talking head. It's like, Sandoval, you're 42. You're washed up. You're living, oh, 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 in a fucking beautiful home with a beautiful girlfriend, which you fucking threw away in the gutter for what? For what? An airhead bimbo? I mean, listen, listen. Raquel's using you just like you use me, okay? The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, right, Sandoval? Noah's Ark, this and that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's so fun. He gets really going. He is so animated in his talking head sometimes. It's really star making. But I love that he's also like, because a lot of us have come to the conclusion that Sandoval has very much used Raquel and planted certain things in her. But in TJ James Kennedy's like, no, Sandoval, she's used you. She's poisoned your mind, Sandoval. I know you're not like this, really. It's really not true. It's wild. And James like, and then Schwartz over here just playing dumb because that's the only thing he knows how to do. Graham knew more tricks than Schwartz does. You know, he knew how to roll over, how to sit, and then he knew how to play dumb as well. Schwartz is just playing dumb. But I will say Schwartz plays dumb way better than Graham Cracker. Allie can't stop laughing at everything James says, just like us. Additional footage from Peacock. Lisa's like, every inch of my being as a woman. I'm a woman. Nick Lane knew something was wrong. I knew something was wrong. You do not get into the hot tub with Miss Malibu in a bikini when your girlfriend's out of town without something going on. I would never let Ken in a jacuzzi. Are you kidding me? I love that Lisa is like, as a card carrying woman, my womanly ends. And I'm like, dude, if you fucking knew, why don't you speak up to Ariana, dork? You know, she's helping you get over your horse injury with old Kandar, Paddar, whatever the horse's name. You can't like go, Ariana, I've got a tingling in my woman or that tells me something is wrong. She's in a bikini, Miss Malibu. This is the final scene, you guys. Here we go. Final scene of the season. 
gonna miss you guys <laughs> promised i wouldn't cry uh this is uh, takes place at electric owl which is a bar restaurant which is pretty good over on um it's on sunset and gardner sunset and gardner the corner which is also right by el compadre love el compadre katie is waiting for friends to join her and ali arrives like how are you and katie's like good i'm a little hungover we're having a little girls night and ali's like uh, i saw the photo on instagram they show the night of Everybody dressed in black. Ariana there. That was the night where they filmed with Schwartz talking to Ariana. And it was like the funeral for Sandoval. You know, Ariana was wearing gold. Sheena, her sister Courtney, Lala, Charlie, Katie, Ariana. And Katie's like, Ariana? She's, uh, you know, as as you'd probably expect, but better, I think. Because Allie asked how Ariana's doing. Lala arrives like, what up, yo? And little Lala's like, fuck yeah, bitch. And Allie goes, hi, you. And Lala goes, how's everybody? And Katie's like, I was just telling her I'm a little uh, of a touch of uh, I have a little of a touch of a hangover. And while I was goes, send that hangover to Daryl wink. No, uh, Lala goes, I feel like we weren't that long at the bar. And Katie's like, I know, but I yo usually don't do shots. This is additional footage from Peacock. We flash back to the previous night at the bar. Um, when she sat down and said, Lala's like, when she sat down and said, Lala, you're a mistress. And Lala adds a misfiring, a, like, Lala, you're a mistress. And Katie throws down a shot. We're back in this scene. And Lala goes, I was hoping that with the shots, it would be like a bonding moment for you and Sheena. And Allie's like, wait, Katie, are you and Sheena good? And Katie's like, I don't want to kill her anymore. And Allie's like, that's good. That's good. It's progress. It is progress, by the way. Katie in the talking head is like, Sheena has apologized for pressing the issue with Schwartz and Raquel. Yeah, Sheena's like, please let me, please forgive me. Um, I can't even look at, I can't make a fist with these nails. Look at, look at, judge, look at, man, God. Um, can you imagine all the shit that happened? The restraining order, the remember, the, the, the black eye. I mean, all of the shit that we've gone through these last three plus months. Just think about it. What a journey that we've taken together. Anyways. Katie says she apologized. So my rage has subsided a little bit and I don't want to murder her anymore. So I would say that is progress. And Allie orders a mimosa, Katie a tequila tank, and Lala orders the tequila tank without the tequila. And Lala goes, no booze in mine though. I will burn this place down if there's booze in it, motherfucker. And Allie laughs and Katie's like, since we saw you guys last, there's been a ton. So much has happened. I mean, Raquel, she's filing restraining orders. She's posting pictures of her scrapes and they show a picture of the infamous black eye and the scrape. And Lala's like, her eyes are always that black. And Lala goes, Katie's like, yeah, scrapes on her eye. What does James think about this? And Allie's like, he's really hurt by Sandoval. He, a lot. I think it was just like, cool. He's not my friend and never was and never will be again. Noah's Ark, all that stuff. You know, Bible stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lala's like, then to see your friend to like look you in your eyes and know he's been sleeping with your ex's ex fiance. And Allie's like, Wednesday night after Ariana found out, they were texting. Like, isn't that crazy? Like, you know, she was texting with DJ James Kennedy that night. And he's like, it was like one in the morning. He was like, night, brother, love you. Oh, wait, wait, Wednesday night after Ariana found out, they were texting. It was like one in the morning. He was, oh, Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood this. He, Wednesday night after Ariana found out, him and Tom were texting, and it was one in the morning, and he was like, night, brother. Night, brother, dude. Love you, dude. Oh, I love you, too. Oh, I love you, too. DJ James Kennedy signing out. I mean, that's dark, dude. Wait, so that night, Wednesday night when Ariana found out, Tom was texting with DJ James Kennedy at one in the morning while they were fighting. I need clarification on this. I don't think I'm getting this correct. Well, wait, 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 here we go. Oh God, I forgot. They show text messages Thursday, March 2nd, 1257 AM. These were not shown in the Peacock version, which now that makes sense. Oh my God, Juliana, thank you so much because I just watched the Peacock version and I was like, I did not see this on the, the go through. And Santa was like, dude, what's up? Hey. And Santa was like, are you still at Tom Tom? I'm here. I knew I got the times wrong. And James is like, oh, good, homie. I love that DJ James Kennedy's like, homie, you're so fresh, home zone. All right. Wait, so Santa was like, are you still at Tom Tom? I'm here. I knew I got the times wrong. I'm saying I'm here. I knew I got the times wrong. All good, homie. And Santa was like, 
Adam told me after the episode, ah, oh, I knew something was off, but I saw the videos and it looked amazing, dude. Oh, maybe because DJ James Kennedy played at Tom Tom after Tom went on or something like that. And so I was like, congratulations, dude, on the release, man. Night. So maybe, I'm sorry, I, I'm still not fully getting this, but so Sandoval that night after he had already been found out was still keeping up this charade, charade of uh, that everything was good. And Ali goes, meanwhile, we had no idea. And Lolly goes, you didn't know yet? And Ali's like, no, we didn't know yet. And Katie's like, so Sandoval already had it out with Ariana, but he was still pretending like everything was, and I was like pretending like everything was cool. And I will say Ariana said in the Color Daddy interview and others that they were arguing that night until like six in the morning. So during that, he was texting. He did so do what a doofus. Um, Katie, uh, Katie goes, yeah, that's what I think is the most diabolical part of it. They were covering the deceit for how long? The betrayal of it all. And Allie's like, the betrayal. But it truly is like that's how good Tom was at like keeping things at a certain level where nobody knew where even in the midst of this nine year relationship falling apart. He was texting with DJ James Kennedy like, what's up, dude? What the, what's going on, dude? Uh, Allie and a talking head goes, I was definitely surprised. Both Tom and Raquel both were able to keep it a secret for so long. My feelings were just like, holy shit, I don't trust anyone. Hold on to that next season, Allie. Don't trust anyone. They cheers with their drinks. And Allie's like, well, we're so bright and springy. And Lala goes, so my whole thing is just making sure that like he's gone over. And Allie's like, who, James? And Lala's like, yeah, because they were planning a life together. He and Raquel were obviously like planning a life together. So now we're talking about Allie and James. And Allie's like, uh-huh. And Lala's like, they were going to get married and have babies and do the whole thing. And like, it was very quick when you came into the picture. And by the way, I love that you came into the picture. I fucking ride for you. And little Lala's like, I fucking ride for you too, bitch. And then Allie smiles like, thank you. And Lala goes, I just want to know that you don't have to deal with things in this relationship that he should have been dealing with before he got into another relationship. And Allie's like, um, I'm really not worried. Uh, like there's really not a lot of stuff that gets brought up. I think it has more to do with the fact that like everyone is sided with her and he felt like he lost all of his friends. Um, that's interesting because DJ James Kennedy does seem to look at things in a very childlike way of like, you stole my friends. No, Lisa, please, Lisa, please. But it is interesting. And also I do wonder about when the cameras are off that Ali DJ James Kennedy relationship. Is it as copacetic and easygoing as it seems? Who knows? Um, Katie says, well, it might be exaggerated or highlighted or brought more to the surface when, you know, he's around her around the group. Cause that, then it's like harder to ignore. And Lala goes, it shouldn't be. And Katie goes, you shouldn't ignore it or suppress it. And Allie goes, I feel like he just feels like how you guys feel. It's just like that deep relationship where he's been friends with Sandoval for so long and he hasn't even talked to him yet. And I think he just really feels like thrown aside and Lala goes, right. Like he was just his disposal the whole time. Additional footage from Peacock. Lala and Atagna Heck goes, I don't think James is upset about this because of Raquel. This has everything to do with James feeling the highest betrayal. He really looked at Tom Sandoval as a brother, which I totally, I mean, I didn't look at him as a brother, but I totally get that. Like you do want, I told you at the, at the beginning of this three hours ago, I, you know, like sometimes we need people to look up to. Sometimes we need that person that is the voice of reason that believes in you, that cheers you on, that does everything right. That might be a little weird going after their like kind of weird dreams of being a karaoke star, but like, hell you need those people sometimes. And when those people, you find out they're not who you made them out to be in your head. Fucking hurts, dude. Lala goes, how did you feel about his calling Raquel? And we get a flashback to James calling Raquel. Remember in the final episode, it was like, you done diddly fucked yourself over. And like all the people you were building friendships with Raquel, like your whole life, you literally just trashed it. Like for Sandoval's little cocky cock. And Lala's like, what I've learned is you have no control over James. And Allie goes, yeah, that's so true. He just going to do what he wants. And Lala goes, my heart is like really broken for Ariana and Sheena in the sense that they were riding so hard for Raquel and for a friend to do you like that. When like dudes, like it's kind of expected for them to fuck you over, you know, like more times than not, it's probably going to happen with dudes. And like your girlfriends are who you lean on. And now he's like, right. That's a bigger betrayal, honestly, for sure. And Lala goes, I mean, I think so. Here we go. You guys last line of the season. Allie goes, damn guys, that's some deep shit. And it certainly has been some deep shit this season. Season 10, Vanderpump Rules. 
Hashtag scandal. We did it. I love you guys. Thank you so much for giving me a purpose this last three months for reigniting like my passion, I, even though I've always been pretty passionate about this, but you've made me even more passionate, even more excited to step to this mic, to do more things. I can't wait to take whatever. We're going to go on a journey, dude, to the different galaxies, galaxy life, man. But anyways, thank you guys so much. Thank you for all the well wishes for my mom. Reminder about that postcard if you get a chance. And um, you might get a surprise episode this weekend. Who knows? But if not, go join the Patreon, man. Go over and support. I have a great team. And Maritza and Sandra especially, thank you guys so much um, for everything that you guys do. And uh, remember to leave positive reviews. And it's Friday, guys. Go have the best fucking time ever. Drink something good. Eat something great. Hang out with people that you love. Tell them you love them. Kiss them, but only if you get their consent. Watch something great. So much good TV on there. Watch something scripted. Watch something by a writer. Don't watch a reality show. Watch something scripted this weekend. Read something. Listen to great music. Uh, go on a walk. Hang out by yourself. Do whatever. And we'll see you bright and early Monday morning for an all-new week of shows. Uh, okay, bye. That's it. Bye, Scandaball.